What is up, guys? Michael here, bringing you another episode of Chew on This Say. I'm super excited to have the wonderful, amazingly talented Brandon Hanna. What is up, man? How's it going? Thank you. Thank you so much for calling me wonderful and talented. <laughs> you wow. are, my friend. <laughs> I'm, I think... We're going to get into it later, but you've been educating me. You've been educating oh, wow. me. So for that, I appreciate you know, and I got to awesome. give love there. Thank you. I'm, I'm super excited to be on your show finally after... Yeah, a uh, couple weeks of trying to schedule. Um, Dude, yeah. Super great the, to be here. The back and forth, yo. We we both went back and <laughs> forth with a little couple delays. And I, I want to say, yeah. Brandon is super kind. And I really appreciate um, how we were able to work that out, man. It was, it was it was really kind of you. And I really appreciate it. Oh, no, of course. And like uh, likewise. Uh, so, um, Dude, I'm, doing I'm, this work, I'm, things just constantly <laughs> moving around. Schedules are crazy. But I'm glad that we're here today. To talk to you man get to know a little bit more about you um first things first this wasn't planned but i think as as both individuals that live in la we should kind of talk about the sad news today oh no <laughs> um, man dude arc light and uh, pacific theaters are gone dude isn't it's, how crazy how crazy is that yeah that is that's that's really rough um yeah i know like sabrina like loves arc light yeah. so much um I've I love ArcLight as well. I I've mostly gone to like AMC and stuff like that in the mm. past, but I've always really enjoyed any time I went to ArcLight, especially the one in Hollywood with yep. the, with the dome and everything. The dome, uh, so. <laughs> the dome, rest in peace, the dome, man. I, the first movie I ever saw in the dome was The Meg. <laughs> what <laughs> what a film! I yeah, saw Star what, Wars. What uh, uh, why can't I think of the name of the movie all of a sudden? Oh my goodness. What is the seventh Star Wars movie called? Am I okay? Force Awakens. Force Awakens. Thank you, Brandon. Oh my yeah. goodness. This is why we have you here. I appreciate <laughs> you giving me uh, some Star Wars knowledge. But yeah, dude, yep. it's so crazy. This pandemic has just shifted so much in our lives. And it's another great establishment gone due to the pandemic. But uh, man, yeah, ho I mean hopefully we get some benefactors or something to revive it. How, how dope would that be? That's what I'm holding out hope for. Hope I really, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that someone is going to come along and save it at least yeah, at least the hollywood location you know at least the please, dome please please it has uh, you have to save the dome tarantino man <laughs> i've been seeing some people tweet out him come on tarantino step up man you gotta you, you gotta save yeah, the dome this is this is this is your time this, this is your is time moment. to shine man no more this disney films moment. all pulp fiction all once upon a time <laughs> in hollywood all day long in the dome i'd be okay with it if it meant it would stay make that rated R star Trek movie and play it yeah. exclusively. In that <laughs> yes. Yes. Please make it so, but man, oh, all this arc light talks got me bummed out, but Hey, I'm excited to have you on the show. We're going to get into knowing you a bit more, but the first question I usually like to ask is what's the last movie you watched, man? Oh, the last movie I watched. Let me think about this. I've been Please. watching a few lately. Uh, and like, I've been starting and stopping and like watching multiple at the same time i feel that so deeply <laughs> as someone that has a very busy schedule as well i feel that man. yeah yep i believe the last one i watched was i'm gonna say i didn't finish it yet i'm watching it for <laughs> schmodown purposes uh, -huh. uh but i i i'm last one i watched was the amazing spider-man the first one correct yes the first one <laughs> what are your thoughts what are your thoughts on the andrew garfield spider-man uh film so we know sabrina is a huge fan and she's yes. gonna see this episode so what you gotta be careful with what you say next my friend i know <laughs> i know it's gonna be civil war in the house but uh <laughs> he, he's i i hmm i i, I, I kind of have some hot takes i feel I like you're a man that's what the yeah, show's about I, it's they're not as far as like we have the Toby films, we have the Andrew Garfield films, mm -hmm. and now the Tom Holland films. Uh, I, I don't hate any of them, but Garfield might be my least favorite. Okay. Of the, okay. Yeah. It's I. It's not him. It's not. It's not him as Spider Man I, or yeah, Peter Parker. Sure. It's just the movies uh, don't a hundred percent work for me. <laughs> I know. I know everyone dislikes the second one. Uh, I kind of liked it in theaters mm. for like uh, multiple reasons. Like it's definitely like a goofy, campy, it's so comic silly, book bro. Movie. It's so fun. <laughs> it's super silly, and sometimes I just like dumb stuff. I just yeah. like dumb stuff. I'm with Sabrina you. Sabrina knows that I like dumb stuff sometimes <laughs> in movies. Yeah. Uh, but on and on top of that, uh, obviously Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone's chemistry in that movie is really good. And I'm like a sucker for like romances in film Same. a lot of the times. Hopeless romantics uh, I, I, here. Yeah. <laughs> so that really worked for me. The first one is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. 
But well, I mean, is it okay? I mean, it's been out for like 2012. Yeah, we can we can throw out some spoilers for it? Amazing Spider-Man. 100. This is this is the one thing I hate the most about the Amazing Spider-Man <laughs> is the last 15 minutes of the movie, dude. <laughs> after, after Captain Stacy dies and he's like, "Leave Gwen out of it," and he's like, oh, "I can't date you, Gwen." Like dude. your dad's dying wishes was to not be with you. And we like spend like 15 minutes on this, you know. and then at the very end. He's just like, ah, I'm just kidding. We're going to be together. He, Andrew and the, Garfield and is such a dog, it. man. He's <laughs> such a dog in that movie. Uh, and the way he does it, like the teacher's like, don't make promises you can't keep. And he like whispers in her ear, like, I know. Those are the best kind. And she like is into it. Like, no. She's like, uh, did you know my dead dad? Did you? <laughs> Yeah, dude, that scene is crazy. I do enjoy those movies, especially the mm-hmm. second one is a huge guilty pleasure of mine because like you, I love dumb, silly yeah. things. And that movie is the epitome of dumb and silly. And I have such a good time with Dane DeHaan flying around <laughs> in the last 30 minutes of that movie. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, the last movie I saw was Godzilla vs. Kong. Have you seen that one yet? I have. Okay. How, how many times have you seen it, if you don't mind me asking? I've only seen it once. Okay. Uh, I really liked it. Okay, cool. I saw it the first time I saw it. I actually didn't like it. I was like this movie. And once again, we all love dumb things. It was to a point where I was just like, this is insane. Like just only I think it's because of the previous movies that took place in that series not being so out there. I don't want to spoil it because it's still a pretty Mm -hmm. new movie. But we get into some sci-fi, crazy, crazy sci-fi spaceship type deals in this film. Uh, it definitely took me off guard the first time I watched, but the second sure, time yeah. I watched it, man, I just let it all happen, let it all come into me, and it was <laughs> so much fun, dude. Uh, I mean, just the fights alone, right? Every single fight, perfectly executed, in my opinion. Adam Wingard did some amazing stuff with the camera and the CGI blending uh, together. Uh, Kong's adorable in this one. <laughs> he gets a little butt scratching at the beginning, which I which I thoroughly enjoyed. And uh, yeah, man, it was a super fun movie, super entertaining. I don't know if I'd rewatch it again. Definitely not my least favorite in that series, but also not my favorite either. It, it's it's up there for me. I thought mm-hmm. Adam Wingard did a really good job, like having to make such a big blockbuster movie. Yeah and make everything work. I heard some complaints early on about people talking about like the human storylines not mm. quite working as they almost never do in these movies. But I, <laughs> Sadly. I, I, yeah, I didn't find myself having an issue with it. I mm. thought it, it worked with where the story had to go. Yeah. And uh, I thought the Tom Holkenborg Junkie XL oh, score yes, was dude. so good. Amazing. Uh, it was it was really great. Like there's like a Godzilla theme that sounds like right yep. out of the like Japanese films, and then the Kong theme like works so well, and just everything together. I thought it really tied the movie up, made it flow really nicely. Mm-hmm. Um, but all those movies are kind of tonally inconsistent. Like you have <laughs> the, the Ga- you have the Gareth Edwards one where it's like it takes itself super that movie, seriously. I just rewatched it, man. I love that film, but yeah, that's that's exactly what I mean. That's the exact counter, um, the antithesis to this film. <laughs> Gareth Edwards Godzilla is so serious. It's so, so serious. serious, man. It's insane. and like yeah, and in in, in ways I, I really like the seriousness how they mm. like they purposely like shoot Godzilla. So he's like Massive. larger than life, yeah. you know? And, but, uh, and then Godzilla King of the Monsters is much more in line with what Godzilla fans have like come to know I'm and sure. love their yeah. whole life growing up on the, the, the classic films. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, you have all of a sudden the monsters moving really fast and like film physics guy over here. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. no <laughs> this way. This can't happen. This like, can't happen. Like, first of all, none of this could happen, but I can <laughs> suspend my disbelief. But when yeah. like it's a bridge King Ghidorah and Godzilla are like charging Running, at one another, yep. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, they'd be going, it'd be a little slower. And I felt like Adam Wingard had that perfect Absolutely. balance of having a move slow, but not too slow. Absolutely. That's what I like to see. So that's another reason I like yeah, Godzilla dude. That w- When you bring up that point, it just makes me think about their first fight on the boat man just the mm-hmm. giant punches the huge swings super cool flick that, that, that shot from the again. trailer that shot from the trailer where kong just like has that haymaker ready for dude, godzilla dude. the moment he crawls on board just... i'm ready for him and then godzilla just jumps dude yeah <laughs> some sick scenes i think i'm gonna rewatch so many scenes from this movie maybe not watch the whole thing but some scenes of this movie are going to live in my head rent-free for a very, very long time. <laughs> and, and going back to the human characters, the second time I watched it, I definitely felt like, you're right, the whole blend of the sci-fi elements I was referring to, the monster fights, the human characters, it all had this air of silliness that I, I personally, and it's my fault, I'll say it right here, that I didn't <laughs> catch on to the first time. So definitely a cool flick. I'd recommend 
you guys checking that one out. But we got to get into knowing more about you now, man. I got to ask, right. where did the love for film first begin for you, Brandon? Oh, wow. So, you know, for me, like, you know, like a lot of people, I grew up, my parents showing me movies. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I'm a huge fan of like geek movies and Star Wars. I remember my love for Star Wars started. Um, my parents bought me a VHS of the Empire Strikes Back special wow. edition, like wow. the year that those came out, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, Empire Strikes Back was the first ever Star Wars movie I saw. What a great one to do. Yeah. That's awesome. That is a yeah. sick origin story, my friend. Yeah. So that was Empire Strikes Back on VHS special edition. But hey, that's the, the one with the least changes and the yeah, most positive changes mm-hmm. to it. So mm-hmm. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. No, continue, and so, please, please. Oh, sure. Yeah. And so like, that's like where my love for Star Wars began. Uh, as a kid, I grew up obsessing over Star Wars, mm. obsessing over Lord of the Rings. I remember that one, too. I think I was at Costco with my mom <laughs> and she picked up like the Fellowship of the Ring on DVD. Awesome. And, and like and she was like, oh, like we should get this. It's a lot like Harry Potter. I think you'll like it because, <laughs> you know, those came out at like the same time. You're seeing orcs getting s- slaughtering yeah. people everywhere. You're like, mom, I'm not sure about this one. I don't know about this one. But then I uh, very quickly became obsessed with I'm Lord sure. of the Rings. Yeah, I there was a m- museum exhibit, I believe, in Boston mm. uh, that I went to when I was a kid. And it was like, all Lord of the Rings stuff, like all about the making of the movies and and everything. I remember I had an English to Elvish dictionary. Whoa! I learned how to oh, I, I learned it. how to write my name in Elvish script. That's, that's <laughs> sick. That is sick. Do you still remember how to do it? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think I, I have two <laughs> copies of the dictionary too. I don't know what happened to you them. You got to find but, them, dude. You got to find them. Yeah. And get get back on on writing. Maybe you could write some reviews or write some uh, science equations in Elvish. Learn learn how to do That'd it. That'd be now. pretty ooh, equations in <laughs> Elvish. Now we're talking. That <laughs> yeah, I get neat. some Elvish numbers in there. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, I I remember loving like the Jurassic Park movies, mm-hmm. um, the Mummy, Brenda Fraser Mummy movies, like dude, so Batman. Fun. Definitely Batman. I had every single, all four, like, you know, of the first four, like Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Had Dude, all I like all four tapes. of those movies. I'm not sure how you feel about them. I like all four of them. Big <laughs> I time. mean, I grew up on them, so I got to love yep. them all. I I, <laughs> yep. I I watched those VHS tapes so many times. Yeah, man. So that's like, as a kid, I just like watched all those movies all the time. Mm-hmm. And then I would say in college is when I really started to dive into film watch a lot of like classic films that i like hadn't Mm. seen before like a lot of indie movies for the first time and like kind of went down that rabbit hole and just really fell in love with film and filmmaking and and fell into like you know like amc movie talk and collider movie talk and Mm. you know watch listen to them every single day and just listening to movie talk every single day i became so knowledgeable about movies yeah man. and it's why like and it's why i think i'm like as good at, as i am at i'll say round one uh movie trivia schmodown <laughs> general movie trivia mm-hmm. is because i just learned everything about movies by watching that show listening Dude, to that show on yeah. like my drives to school and work and so i just have an awareness of so many movies mm-hmm. even if i haven't seen them it's enough yep. to get by like director title release oh, yeah. year actor stuff like that so it's just I just kind of like fell into it after that point. And mm. I mean, the rest, is, I guess, is kind of history. I just movies are like therapeutic for me. I just Same. love sitting down watching a movie. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's interesting how in different points of your life and how when you're going through different things Mm -hmm. how you can get something different out of the same movie oh absolutely yeah we were just touching on that in the past like two or three episodes that topic keeps coming back (laughs) up about re-watching films and it's true dude like godzilla versus kong for example but i just a week apart and my opinion went from negative to positive just like that and it happens all the time all the time I saw Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Rookie Bobby in theaters. <laughs> I remember uh, not being very impressed. Oh, bro. I watched it back on like TNT or whatever mm. uh, network was playing it like years later. Uh-huh. And I was like, this is the funniest movie I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. And you're watching the TV edit version too <laughs> yeah. at that point. It had to be. So that means, you know, you got to get so, that full version to watch. You're going to love it, man. If you exactly. have you seen it, have you seen it since then? 
I have seen it. I still, I love it. It gets, one of those movies gets funnier and funnier every Agreed. time. <laughs> Agreed. I completely agree. It's but just so dense with jokes yeah. in the best way. It's not, literally, that era of Will Ferrell comedy was just the best. Mm-hmm. So many guilty pleasures of mine come from that time. But, um, dude, you said it, you hit the nail around the head because I feel like people from our generation, like within our age range, maybe like two years younger than myself and maybe a year older than yourself, fall into that camp that we watched AMC movie talk back <laughs> in the day every single hey, day dude every single day either in my car or like mm-hmm. on my headphones while I was working because I've had like a desk job you know so mm-hmm. I can I'm fortunate enough where I can like work and listen to something at the same yep. time yeah every single day I would like listen to the schmoes no show every single week that was like I was like the highlight of like my podcasting week at work, like when a new Schmo Snow dropped, because I, <laughs> I never I never watched live, um, mm. but I would always like listen the next day while yeah. I was at work. <laughs> yeah. How did this lead into you working with the Schmoes? Yeah. So obviously, like spoiler, I was a fan for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fan from of the Schmodown from the very beginning because mm. they introduced it on their show as like just like a fun game and it just took off it's so crazy how that started dude it's so something so small it felt like at the time and now look (laughs) and i remember when they started doing it i was like wow this is really exciting like i like want to see how well i do i want to play along Mm -hmm. and and so to 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 be in it now is, is pretty crazy yeah um and it's just crazy too. Like all these people that I just used to listen to, like while I was at work or in the car yeah. or whatever, like a lot of these people now are just like really good friends of mine and they're just like amazing people. <laughs> and they're like just as great as you imagine them to be. Like, yeah. you know, it's just, it's so fortunate when uh, your heroes don't let you down. You know, Mark Ellis real, jokes man. a lot about how like I was his hero. <laughs> he was my hero. <laughs> and, and and I like to like give him a hard time back. Mm-hmm. He like, he's, he, Mark Ellis is, is so great of a human being. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, I ended up transferring out. I used to live in Connecticut. So okay. Let's start off there. I used to live in Connecticut, mm-hmm. born and raised my whole life. And I got an opportunity to move out to California for work. And it was something I'd been thinking about for a long time mm-hmm. um, because I'm a mechanical engineer. I work in aerospace and there's so many amazing aerospace opportunities wow. out here. And then on top of that, like, obviously I'm a lover of film and a lover of, of you know, Schmodown and Collider and AMC and all that stuff at the time. <laughs> Gotta and get so close, I baby. Like, Gotta I wanted get close. to be around it. I just wanted <laughs> yeah. to be around it all. Yeah. You know, when they have like meet and greets and stuff and like cool events at movie theaters that they host, I wanted to be there. Of course. So it's just nice to be around. And then fortunately, uh, you know, going to all that stuff, um, I just kept bumping into the same people over and over again who are also fans of the Schmoes and fans of Collider and all that mm. and all that. And, um, actually at the arc light um <laughs> in hollywood yeah they yep. had a back to the future screening that collider hosted oh, that's awesome yeah and so many people that we're all friends with now like met for the first time at that screening that's or crazy happened to be there but didn't end up meeting each other until later like pj mm-hmm. campbell was there i never saw him mm-hmm. i didn't like meet. i didn't really like meet pj until like months after that but he was there. Like everyone was there. So, um, you know, I met some like amazing people there. I bumped, that was when I bumped into my friend, uh, Raul Rodriguez for the first time. And then I just happened to, there was like another screening at the Greek theater for Shaun of the dead. Wow. That amazing um, movies back to back. Yeah. (laughs) yeah, Some people at Collider were like promoting that. And Mm. I was like, all right, that sounds like a fun time. I'll, I'll go check that out. And I was out here like alone at the time. So I just went by myself. You know, I didn't know anybody. Um, but you know, it, you had to like go. Right. So, of course. and then of course, like at the end of the screening, who would I bump into again? My friend Raul. And we awesome. like get to talking <laughs> and all that stuff. We bumped into Kumail Nanjiani and Emily V. Gordon. Whoa. And that was really awesome. Uh-huh. We were, me and Raul were just like talking on the sidewalk and all of a sudden he just stops talking and freezes like that. And he was like, Kumail Nanjiani. I was like, what? Dude, I was like, oh crap. It in is. LA, it's so crazy. <laughs> just like sometimes you're just like, I was at a Kava yeah. like a two or three months ago and Shia LaBeouf was standing in front of me. Oh, it's wow. just like that's just what it's like out here sometimes it's insane Dang. i would love to bump into shia labeouf that sounds great <laughs> it was a little, i'm not gonna lie it was a little scary but we can get into that at another time <laughs> Yo, was, i bet um but yeah and so and then i was like all right cool like it was so great like getting to know this guy blah blah mm. blah and then on a whim one day i went to the last day of la comic-con 
Like mm-hmm. I literally just woke up in the morning. I was like, oh, today's the last day of Comic-Con. Tickets still available? Yep. Bought one on my phone, went out the door. Awesome. Uh, and then who do I bump it to again? Uh, Raul Rodriguez. Rodriguez. <laughs> right out, right outside the, right next to the Tommy Wiseau booth where Tommy oh, Wiseau was amazing. hanging out. Amazing. Uh, just like handing out candy to kids being like this quirky, Whoa. like weird, <laughs> but like the nicest guy yeah. you've ever like met. Like he was, he was, he was really great. I like bought like a, cause he like makes like apparel and stuff. I'm like, I'm rambling a lot, but like, there's a lot. Dude, to, I want to hear it all, through. bro. I know yeah, he sells uh, underwear. Did you buy some yeah, underwear no, from him? I didn't buy, I didn't buy underwear, but I did buy a really nice backpack that I still have. Okay. That's a sick. Tommy Wiseau <laughs> backpack. It's probably the nicest backpack I've ever owned. Like, no way. Really good quality. Okay, shout out look, to Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, shout out to Tommy. I'm going to put and that was, backpack up on the screen. Cause I might have to go <laughs> pick that up now. Yeah, it was, well, it was great. Cause I wanted to get an autographed copy of the room on Blu-ray because i had to of course <laughs> and then i also bought a autographed copy of the script i have the actual full script oh that's awesome of the room like one of that's the original awesome. copies one of the original uh, copies i think like i think like they made like a bunch so uh-huh. like it was like in a, like that stack of like a bunch they made yeah wow yeah. that's sick and uh and so and then on top of that he was like it was it was like one of those things like for like 10 more bucks you get this backpack so i only got the backpack <laughs> for 10 bucks yeah what a and deal man come on how are you i believe i believe it if you sold that backpack for 50 bucks and i got it for wow. 10 okay that's a glowing endorsement so, from brandon right now guys yeah glowing check endorsement <laughs> check out the tommy wiseau backpack line you will not be disappointed <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so i bumped into raul there and raul was with uh, who we know to be now in the movie trivia showdown, Janine the Machine. Mm. And so Raul was friends with Janine. Uh, I got to know Janine. And then also on that day was a Schmodown Comic Con panel. Wow. So we all went to the Schmodown panel together as fans. Mm. Um, and it was a really great time. That was like I met Christian and like Dagnino there for the first time. And, and it was like a lot of fun. And like, I didn't even know who like Ben and Andrew were at the time, Ben Bateman and Andrew guy. I like saw them up there. I'm like, I don't know who these guys are. Even like I met them again, like a few months later. And I'm like, I, I, I hadn't I watched their matches I, yet. I, I don't know who this is. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, you guys seem really nice. I don't know who you are, but it's really <laughs> nice. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah. And then Janine got involved in the Schmodown. Mm-hmm. And so started inviting like me and Raul and like any friends that were in town to come yeah. to tapings whenever she competed. And through that, I just got to know everybody. And that's awesome. Um, I, 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 took a, I took a shot. I asked Christian if he needed any help uh, with production. And so he brought me on as a production assistant and I got to work behind the scenes for a full season. And then throughout that, I ended up getting a chance to compete and you know i built a great relationship with ben bateman and andrew guy working with them on their action industry stuff Mm -hmm. and them and roxy stryer giving me an opportunity to go uh host over at after buzz tv and the popcorn talk network um and all that stuff and it's just i just like met some of the most amazing people that like and it's just, I got really lucky. <laughs> you know? Dude, I love that story, man. That, is, that I'm, I'm going to say this right now. That's one of my favorite stories I've heard on the show so far. That's awesome. Really? That is so <laughs> awesome. Um, I got to ask, though, wait, before you joined the Schmodown itself, did you have a character in mind already? <laughs> um, I like had like a bunch of like goofy ideas, mm-hmm. you know, but n- not necessarily like a specific character. Um. Christian came up with like the hitman and all that stuff. And gotcha. I was like, Hey, like that's one of the cooler nick- nicknames he's handed oh, absolutely. out. So <laughs> of course I was hundred percent on board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, no, I was just kind of like, I just really wanted to like be there I, mm-hmm. and I was just going to kind of like be like myself, you know, and just kind of have fun. And then, you know, I got to like, kind of like do the, the heel thing. I know we're not supposed to say that word, but uh, mm. you know, got to do that. And it was really cool. Cause obviously I was, a huge fan. Oh, yeah, I kind of left like this part of the story out, how I became like really close with Ben Bateman and Andrew Please, Guy. Let's hear it, man. This is a good chunk of the story. Uh, I, um, you know, I obviously wanted to be in the Schmodown. So I started doing reaction videos and I wanted my reaction videos to be unique that like set me apart from everyone else. For sure. And so I had this silly idea where I was going to 
do a Ben Bateman impression oh, wow. and be in character as Ben Bateman uh-huh. for the entire reaction. That's hilarious. And like I had, <laughs> I had two reaction videos that I did and I posted these in the Facebook group like years ago. So you could find them if you go okay, back yeah, deep enough. I got to find these clips. I'll throw them up <laughs> on the screen right now. That's awesome. Oh my God. But um, <laughs> yeah, I did like like a little sketch, like a little two minute sketch but, uh, as Ben Bateman before wow. like two of these reactions that uh-huh. I did. And um, Ben Bateman like loved it. And Andrew Guy loved it. And like, so through that, like that's how I like was able to like build a great connection with them. Cause like I was already like around them, like in the studio and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And like, I'd already been introduced to them, but like, that was like when really um, that was like a kind of like an opening for me to get closer with those two guys. And yeah. they were so kind and generous with their time and like their mentorship. And like, mm. they d- they've done so many things to help me out that they just didn't have to do that. Like they gained nothing from it except yeah. just being nice to somebody Mm -hmm. so uh, I can't like you know thank them enough and everyone involved for like helping me get through the door yeah you know so um but yeah it was just these these funny videos that I did as Ben (laughs) and like I I you know I remember I used to listen to Pete Holmes's podcast Mm -hmm. I think it's called you made it weird Mm -hmm. I used to listen to that a lot and Pete Holmes once talked about like doing impressions and how like a good impression, you don't just do an impression of somebody, you kind of like make it your own. Yeah. Like when you see like Alec Baldwin do Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live, <laughs> that's not exactly what Donald Trump sounds sure. like. We yeah. all know that, but he made it its own thing where Absolutely. it's really funny. And like, you know, it's Trump, but it's like, it's his own separate thing yeah. or it's almost his own separate character. And you got to kind of make it your own like that. And that's like what a, when a really successful impression can kind of take off. So mm-hmm. that was my kind of mindset. I was like, okay, I don't exactly look like Bateman. I don't exactly sound like <laughs> Bateman, but if I can kind of make it my own, it can yeah. work. And they used to do these really stupid, like team action voices. Like they'd be like, mm. well, what's going on guys? <laughs> <laughs> like stuff like that. And, and like, they would do that like on occasion in the mm. showdown, like not all the times, like a lot of times they talk in their regular voice, but in promos and stuff, they do this like other, like weird, yeah. almost like Brooklyn accent Ben Bateman <laughs> called it once that they were doing. Mm. And so like, I just took that and like heightened it. And that's how I talked mm. for the entire thing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You go back and watch them. It's like a little embarrassing now, but they're pretty funny. We got we got to find them. We got to show off the comedy chops, man. I literally, <laughs> yeah, I literally draped a green screen over my shower curtain and shot it <laughs> in my bathroom. Dude, you do what you got to do in the early days, dude. We were just yeah. talking about this on the last episode, stacking DVD cases to get to put the camera on top and use that as like an Im- improvisational tripod. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. You do what you got to do. You do what you got to do. But um after forming that character did you have any reservations or problems after we're not gonna try and use the term too much but a heel (laughs) if i had any reservations about being a heel reservations or i guess also adding on to that problems after becoming a heel because we know how this film Mm. space can often be very unkind (laughs) sadly at times (laughs) and you're a genuinely kind guy dude you are you are one of the nicest guys in the business so yeah how what was that like kind of if you did face backlash how how was how did you handle that sure no i I appreciate that um you know the really successful like there's like maybe a couple exceptions but the really successful schmodown personalities are people who kind of play heightened versions of themselves Mm -hmm. Like Andrew Guy is like a great example of someone who, A, he's an amazing actor, so he could play any character he wants and gets away with and get away with it. Mm -hmm. But also like the dastardly character (laughs) is just like him taking like every like negative trait he has about himself Mm -hmm. and dialing it up by a factor of a thousand, you know, and making it work, like still kind of being himself, but also not being himself at all Mm -hmm. and finding that like right balance. And that's something that I think like, like uh chandru's done like a really good job with yes. is like you know like just like 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 obviously like none of these people are like a-holes in real life of course but we all have yeah. like these like qualities about ourselves and you can heighten them to a point Absolutely. where they're obnoxious mm-hmm. and be a bad guy and like annoy people with it so <laughs> um but then you have like lon harris who plays these characters that are like entirely like 
not who he is in real life, but he's like, he's so good at it. And you get so invested in the professor and the delinquent where you're like a hundred percent on board and you like, you buy into what he's selling, you know, and you just, you want to see him compete every single time. And so that's like, it's something it's really difficult to do. And for me, I really wanted to try being someone entirely not myself and really try to like, um, just play a character a hundred percent. And so that's what I, 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 I really tried to do that. And I think in a lot of ways I was successful. Like people believed me <laughs> when I would be a jerk, <laughs> um, you know? Yeah. Like you're very I, convincing, were, my friend, you were very convincing. <laughs> there were like comments, you know, people say mean things about me, uh, yeah. in, you know, in the comments. And that's just like part of, part of the job. I had a meeting with Christian about it, you know, last season when I really kind of, amplified everything I was Mm -hmm. doing in preparation for that inner geekdom tournament and post being traded um, from the den to the droogs and all that stuff. And he was like, Hey, like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, your character like could be this and like, but the fans are going to hate you and like, they're going to (laughs) like come after you. Like you got to be okay with that. And I was Mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, let's go for it. Like, you know, I have thick skin. um, And that's kind of how, I always approached it. If I saw people um, commenting negative things about me, I was like, all right, that means I did my job. This is what I want. This is the reaction that I want. I want people to boo me. I want people to like say these things about me. And also they're just talking about me. Like if like, yeah. like, like, Hey, like, Hey, like you can say all these horrible things you want, but you're talking about me. So you're I'm relevant noise about you. A hundred percent. I'm relevant, you know, but then that kind of like, devolved into like what some people would call go away heat which is like mm. like because in wrestling terms like when you have yeah. heat that's like a really good thing everyone's talking about you everything you know like the, 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 everything's buzzing about you and mm-hmm. what you're doing exactly. and all that stuff but like when you have like go away heat which i don't even know like i've heard like ken and talk about it because he's like a huge wrestling guy mm-hmm. and like he i don't know if like you know it's like it could be a real thing it could not be a real thing i don't i don't really know so i'm not, I don't necessarily know. I'm not the biggest like wrestling guy myself. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I love wrestling in terms of like the storylines and the characters and the personalities, of course. Of course. Um, especially like being in the Schmodown. Like I'm like, you know, watching documentaries about wrestling and like certain eras of crazy wrestling, stories. Really, of really wrestling, fascinating. Man. Yeah. It, it is so fascinating. The wrestling itself, like the physical act of wrestling is not a hundred percent for me, mm-hmm. but everything else about it. I love it's so great. For and sure. so, Thankfully, the stuff that I love is in the Schmodown as well. So, <laughs> yeah. but anyways, to uh, like kind of like stumble in here to go back to the whole go away heat thing. Mm. Like, I can't say for certain whether or not it's real, but it kind of felt like it was going towards that direction mm-hmm. where um, like people like didn't like me and they were like talking badly about me. And that's great, but they were doing it because they didn't want to see me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like they just genuinely did not want to watch my matches anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, it's, it's kind of difficult, especially if I was winning a lot, it'd be a different story. But when you kind of do all this stuff and you really dive deep into the character and then you keep losing, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really hard to, to stay relevant and have people care. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm doing my job. I'm, I'm, I, I like consider myself like a team player. Like I, the, the hit, I, I like to say that the hit man has an ego to bruise, but Brandon Hanna doesn't. <laughs> so like, if I have to look like a doofus on camera Mm -hmm. to kind of like help build up another character in the league. Like I'm okay with doing that. Cause like I'm doing my job and Hey, I'm still in the showdown. I'm still playing a character on camera. I still get to like act and have fun and compete and do all these things. Obviously I want to, I take it very seriously. I study very hard. I want to get to the top, Mm -hmm. but if it's not my moment to be at the top, I'm okay with kind of like being there for like other people to, to kind of get to the top, yeah. you know, like me, me and Chandru had like this amazing feud at the beginning of our Schmodown careers. Um, and he's the one that came out on top of it. And like, he uh, worked really hard. He kept winning. He elevated himself to the top and I was just kind of there to like play part of that. And that's yeah. okay. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'm definitely working really hard because uh, someday, hopefully soon, I want it to be my time as I'm well. I'm sure, bro. I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to ask to kind of get off the schmodown uh, after this point. I want to ask, what are your goals yeah. for this season, man? Sure. Uh, my goals for this season, I mean, obviously just to win first and <laughs> foremost, <laughs> just to win. I just yeah. want to win. 
I know I'm going to be facing some, some tough, tough competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know there's going to be a, a path to a title shot before the tournament. And I know obviously the tournament, there's going to be an inner kingdom tournament that in and of itself is going to be a potential path to a title shot. Mm, okay. So I know I have a couple opportunities. I have a little bit of room to kind of stumble and make mistakes and, and learn, especially with these new categories being implemented, but I'm, I'm confident in myself and I just want to, I want to score points for my faction. Yeah. Obviously my personal goal, if I could potentially get a title shot, that would be insane to me. I would yeah. be like over the moon about it. But if I don't quite get there, but I accrue a good amount of points for the faction, then like, and like end the season with an above 500 record mm -hmm. and like a pretty decent accuracy. And like, I kind of like get some people turned around like to kind of become fans of me a little bit. Like, I think that would be really cool. I'm trying yeah. something a little different this year with the whole character stuff, trying to, to do that thing where I'm kind of just like an elevated version of gotcha. myself, but it also can be hard. Cause I really care. Like I really care about I'm this sure, thing. Man. Yeah. And so it, when you, when you're in a match that you really, really want to win and you're like, I don't get nervous. That's the funny thing too. And I'm kind of like bouncing around again, but I don't get nervous being in front of the camera or mm. anything like that. Playing the character is like, has become a very easy thing to me now because I just, I know awesome. I understand myself. I understand the character yeah. very well. And I have a lot of fun doing it as someone who has no like professional acting experience or like schooling or anything like that. I just love acting. Yeah. And so this is a really great avenue for me to be able to do that and express that creative side of myself. So that part is comes easier to me. But when I'm in a match that I really, really, really want to win, that's when I get nervous and yeah. that's when it's like hard for me to maintain the character. <laughs> I was just going to say, dude, I can't imagine the pressure, like to, for one, to answer these questions in a small yeah. period of time, to, but to be a character and have to think through that while answering questions, dude. Sometimes, sometimes it could be helpful because if you're like playing the character in the middle of it, mm -hmm. it kind of like takes your mind off the stress of the situation. For sure. Cool. At least for me, it, yeah. I find it helpful. Some people it's a distraction for me. I have found it helpful in the past. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're just in a match that you really want to win, like like more than anything. Yeah. And so when you are struggling in a match that you really want to win, that's when it becomes I'm sure. really hard to yeah. like not get a little deflated, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but hey, man, hey, this season, I'm rooting for you. I know so many people are rooting for you, bro. And if it's not this season, it could be the next. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, I, it's, it's nice to have some fans. You know, I've got too many fans. But some fans is Hey, nice. I'll say this. And this is moving on to our next topic, dude. The way I became a fan of yours personally is through your personal channel, actually. Oh, um, film, film physics is where I want to start, dude. Okay. So, obviously, you have a huge love for science. And it's, you're also part of your profession as well. What made you take that jump to start that show? Certainly. Um, so uh, for those who don't know, I'm a mechanical engineer. I've worked in aerospace, as I kind of mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And so science and engineering, obviously passions of mine, movies, acting, being an on-camera personality, hosting shows, also another passion of mine. Yeah. So it became a great way to merge the two together, which is ultimately what I would love to do with my career is get into science communication mm -hmm. and be able to merge these two passions of mine together and, and, and do something that I really love while also utilizing an education that I really care about and trying to do some good and like educate people and just kind of at least at the very least get a conversation going about science just out there, like for anyone yeah. who wants to listen and be a part of it. So yeah. for me, funny enough, back to that collider screening of Back to the Future at the <laughs> Arclight, yes. I met Christian Ruvalcaba and Cody Hall that night. I spent a awesome. lot of time talking to them and that was the first time I met them and they were super great. Uh, we even took like a silly picture because, um, you know, uh, you know, Brian, aka Beardo, uh, wasn't there for that night, but we we all took a picture of ourselves, um, giving the middle finger, and they asked me to tweet it at him <laughs> as like, like a prank. 
That's awesome. Yeah. And so that was like a fun little memory for someone who was just like a fan at the time. Yeah, of course. And they've been so great. And like since that time, I've worked with them on a number of their like short films and sketch mm-hmm. comedy videos. They have always like kept me in mind. Um, and it's and they're, they've been super great and super awesome. And that they've been another avenue for me um, to kind of work behind the scenes on like a, even it's like a little production, uh, yeah. just like kind of like work behind the scenes, behind the camera, like holding a boom mic. I've done that. I've done all <laughs> kinds. Of, I've done every like job in the showdown and adjacent that you could think it's good, of. good, man. That means you're learning, dude. You're learning yeah. in every different avenue, which is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning as much as I can. I self-teach myself a lot of stuff like Photoshop mm. and Adobe Premiere and After Effects and all oh, that. I feel that, man. It's I've tough. I've <laughs> self-taught myself all that stuff. And, mm. um, but anyways, uh, yeah, go, so go check out the Wangers and the uh, Amateur Absolutely. Art Films to support Absolutely. those guys as well. But Uh, I met them and honestly, like, I don't know if I've ever told them this. I probably should have, but (laughs) just, just meeting them really inspired me to want to do my own thing and create my own content. Literally just meeting them, like inspired me to want to be a content creator. And so I spent like a few weeks thinking about what exactly I wanted to do. And then I came up with the idea for film physics Mm-hmm. And I wanted to like, okay, this is great. Like I could talk about like science in movies and whether or yeah. not the filmmakers got the science correct or incorrect. And it could be like a fun little short form content video that I post on YouTube. And, and I was like living out of a hotel at the time that I first started wow. it. Cause I was on business uh-huh. travel. Cause I hadn't quite moved out here yet. And so like literally like draping a green screen over the like window curtain <laughs> in my hotel room and all that That's awesome. <laughs> editing in my hotel room, like up to like wee hours of the morning, spending mm-hmm. an entire Sunday making my Ant-Man video, like 12 hours straight yeah. of like shooting and like editing and all that stuff. I just, I mean, I had so much free time, so I, t- I, I made good use of it. And uh, so I, that's how that all kind of got started. Like I think my first four episodes of film physics, I shot out of hotel rooms. Wow. Okay. Yeah. A little behind the scenes there. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. It, that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and so it's, it's really obviously obvious in my Ant-Man one. Cause I didn't do that one in front of a green screen. I needed like, I needed to like a table that I wanted to mm. shrink down on. Yeah. Yeah. And, like do all that stuff and like kind of do that Ant-Man effect. But so, yeah, I started doing that. I initially like, had an idea for a show where I was like, what if I like had a show where I like shared like three scientific facts and like one of them was fake and like, Oh, okay. And, yeah. And like, kind of like use that to help teach like how to determine like fake science news or something. Mm-hmm. Cause like, I couldn't quite like figure out a way to make that work, but I was, gotcha. so I didn't end up doing that, but I was inspired to do something like that. Cause I like thought back to high school where like one time um, I was in health class and the teacher asked a question about something and I just like r- rose my hand and I was like known for like being like in the top of my class in high school. Brand, you're so, smart like, you know, let, let's, so like people, let's not shy away well, from it. You're I know, I, like, I don't know how to talk about this without sounding arrogant, <laughs> but like the whole, to, to, to understand the context of the story is like people all knew that I was like a pretty like smart kid. I did mm-hmm. good in school. So uh, I like rose my hand. I don't know why I felt like the need to do this, but I rose my hand and like dead seriously and confidently gave an answer to his question that was completely false. In- intentionally. <laughs> and, intentionally. <laughs> and, 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 and he was like, he's like, Brandon, you can't joke around like that. People know that you're smart. They will believe you. Dude, it's true. <laughs> it's true, man. Yeah. And I was like, all right, sorry. I was like, just you trying know. to be funny. Oops. But yeah. <laughs> so that like inspired me. I'm like, wow, I guess I can like convincingly say, make up fake facts about science mm-hmm. and like say it and people will believe me. And then maybe I could work that into a show that teaches people how to understand, yeah. uh, to be skeptical about news that you read and make sure it comes from a reliable source, make sure mm. it comes from a peer reviewed scientific journal and stuff like that. Could have find a way to make it work. So film physics was a great thing because I love movies yeah, and I love dude. physics. So it was like, <laughs> it was like, ah, this is perfect. Like it's, it's almost too obvious. Um, and I originally wanted to call the show pseudoscience because like, you know, like mm. fake science and yeah. all that. And so I like sketched up my own little logo that I never used. Awesome. I still have it in a notebook somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah, but you know, so I I did all that, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Mm. And so, yeah, that's kind of how film physics got started. I wish I had like 
found a way to put a little more into it, make it take off a little more because now there's so many people out there doing videos like that, mm. which is great. Like, because not, people are like learning and like, it's a yeah, conversation sure. that people want to be a part of. Um, but it's like, it's like, oh, I'm a little jealous of their success. Cause I want that Damn. to be my success. But I'll say this dude, you're, you are making it fun for me personally, <laughs> and you're making it enjoyable. And that's uh, hard because mm -hmm. I'm not a huge science and math guy at all <laughs> probably my two <laughs> weakest subjects um so through watching film physics i mean watching you put down these formulas and whatnot i gotta ask are you coming up with the formulas prior to like are do you have that all laid out already or do you pick a film and then start trying to figure out the idea what's that process like sure i kind of look at a movie and see if i can like find anything that would be fun to mm. explain you know, and make it be like something that I know how to explain because I'm not an expert by any means in a lot of things. Like I know math, I know physics, I know engineering, I can work with that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes things are really complicated, more advanced physics than I know, yeah. or like a topic that's kind of like outside my particular expertise. But I've also kind of done that. There's a multitude of videos where I've done extensive research to make sure that I get something mm -hmm. right because I want to get it right. Yeah. And I want to learn something new myself. Of course. So for instance, I was like the first episode I did on the Titanic, whether or not you know Jack and Rose could survive <laughs> together floating on that board. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's kind of something that's been done to death. I found a bunch of articles on it online. It was done on Mythbusters. Mm -hmm. But it was like, you know, this sounds like a good, I, a good one for me to kind of just, yeah. you know, like for lack of a better term, get my feet wet and like, just like crank one <laughs> out, perfect. you know, and yeah. crank one out and like get a feel for it and everything. So that's the one that I did. And so like, I try not to like plagiarize anybody. I kind of like mm -hmm. read something and be like, okay. And then I go and I do the math myself and mm -hmm. see if like the numbers line up. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like I'm pretty confident in this. This is like about what other people are doing. I've made a, a couple of different assumptions on like weight and size and stuff like that, like based it. on my yeah. own measurements. Mm -hmm. So I don't just copy and paste somebody else's work. Of course. Um, like a good example of this is my most recent one. I did my film physics Christmas special, which yes. is something I've been dying to do for like two years and finally got the so inspiration to film. do it. <laughs> you know, um, thank shout out to Sabrina for like, convincing me to, to work on that and, yeah, dude. and, and bearing with me as I spent many nights uh, just editing <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> over the yeah. course of two months. But um, yeah, I, so with that one, I did research on it. I was like, all right, someone had to have done this before because I posted to go back a little bit. I posted to Twitter like, oh, what would you guys like to see me do for like a Christmas special film mm -hmm. physics? And then Jen Kemp, uh, also from the Schmodown, tweeted about um, uh, John McClane jumping out of the roof. And yes. I was like, oh, that's perfect. Let me look back into the movie. And then I was like, yeah, like when he jumps off the roof with the fire hose wrapped around his waist, nope. there's got to be something there. I don't know off the top of my head entirely, but maybe if I do a little bit of research, I can figure out like exactly what type of physics are at work mm. here. And so I did a bunch of research. I found a couple different people who have done the calculations themselves. And this is aside from plagiarizing, which is wrong, but this is why you don't copy and paste <laughs> someone's work uh -oh, while reading go. this, while reading this one particular article, which I will not name, okay. their math was completely wrong. Really? I'm like, I'm like, none of this makes sense. None of this is adding up. Cause like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do the math myself. I'll mm. copy. I'll like, I'll look at what they're doing and I'll try to replicate it and see yeah. if it makes see sense. It yeah. Yeah. And then, and then I would have gone and then done it my own way aside from that. Mm -hmm. But I was looking at it and I was like, this doesn't make sense. They're messing something up. Like these numbers, they yeah. do not add up <laughs> at all. So like, that's why, you know, like proofread, if I just copy and pasted that article, Absolutely, boom, dude. I just post a video out there where the math is completely wrong. And as we said, people will believe me. hundred <laughs> percent. So I was really diligent. I like found another source and kind of like, I found another source that did, that took a different approach to the math. Um, there's that took a different because if, if you watch the video, I solved the problem in two different ways. And basically, I just determined the amount of force that would be exerted on John McClane mm. once the, the fire hose was completely extended and brought him to a stop. Yes. Um, there's two different ways to calculate that force. One article calculated it one way. Another article mm. I read calculated it another way. And so the one that was wrong, they were calculating it a, a, a good way 
but the way they were doing it was all off. All so I, gotcha. I figured out how to take their approach and do it correctly. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I was like, okay, like this is supposed to be a time value, but the time value they're using doesn't make sense. Like what time value should it be? Like, oh, it should be derived from this other equation. And I plugged in, it makes sense. Mm. And then I compared it to the other website and I was like, Hey, within a percent difference of 1%, these are like the same. Yeah. So this like checks out, this is good to go. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I did. If you watch the video, that's exactly what I did. So wow. I'm getting, I'm getting really into it now, but no, uh, I love it, dude, please. But to, to kind of <laughs> like go back, about. yeah, to kind of go back to your like original question, I just kind of like watch stuff, you know, like can the King Kong video, for example, I had a high school physics professor that one time told me that King Kong could never exist because of scaling. Because when you, mm. when you take something and scale it up, the volume increases at a rate higher than its surface area does. Gotcha. Um, it's just, that's just the way it is when you scale something up. Mm. And so um king kong would have these like really really big organs that don't actually <laughs> get enough blood pumped into wow. them for him to yeah. survive and then upon further research like this is what i mostly focused on in my video like his bones wouldn't be strong enough to support his own weight and because if you scale crumble. it up the, yeah the bone den bone density is not like is not strong enough to to support a creature that big mm -hmm. that's why evolution created gorillas to be a certain size because <laughs> if they were any bigger they would die yeah you all know, all the bigger ones you know they just die off like that's just like kind of like how evolution works right <laughs> so um and so anyways i did that and then i was like oh this can kind of be applied to like the t-rex in jurassic park too mm -hmm. so i kind of like did that and i kind of like dove into like the science of why like the frog uh dna thing didn't quite work out and that was just from doing like some research online yeah. And then I was like, oh, I could also apply the scaling to Ant-Man too. Because obviously Ant-Man gets really small and Absolutely. really big. Yep. And I kind of like played that within the rules that the movie sets up too, you know? So it's not like 100% just like, obviously like no one could like shrink down shrink to the down. size of an ant. <laughs> yeah. But if you like take the rules that the movie, you mm -hmm. know, gave you, they, they said that the atoms come, the molecules like come closer together and there's less space between molecules and that's how you shrink. So I took those rules and I applied the physics and, you know, came up with a solution as to whether or not Ant-Man would be able to exist. Yeah. And that's kind of like how like my first four videos got started. And then of course I love Star Wars. So I did a couple of Star Wars yeah. videos and just, I just kind of try to find things that might work something that is either easy to explain through research or something mm -hmm. that I could do some fun calculations on you know, like I did, um, I did uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the fizzy lifting drinks. Ah. And that was like, that was like really fun to like, kind of like do some math and figure out like mm. how much, basically how much helium would you have to inflate <laughs> a person with to make them float? Yeah. And, um, and just like kind of like playing around with that because they're drinking soda and the, so the fizzy lifting drinks and obviously those are like probably carbon dioxide bubbles yep. uh, in like, you know, like in a soda. And if that's what's making you float is the carbon dioxide. That doesn't make any sense because carbon dioxide is heavier than air. Mm. So you would sink, you wouldn't float. <laughs> gotcha. Dude. So I'm like, okay, well let's maybe if we replace it with helium, how much helium would you need to be? Mm. So like, and then um, my Batman returns one was another one. I'd have to do a lot of research on because I really wanted to figure out whether or yeah, not you the gotta penguins, respect Batman Returns. Yeah, man. yeah. A Batman Returns <laughs> is my favorite Batman movie. It really is. I, I like that it. hot take. It's in my top three for sure. 100. I always loved it as a kid. Maybe it's because like I'm a little twisted myself. But it's, Same, the, it's, the, it's twisted the darkest. Kid. It's the darkest of the Batman movies. Oh, so like, of course, I'm like Penguin gravitated freak, toward it. Penguin is I love. That film. I love horror movies. You know, ever as a kid, I was always fascinated with horror movies. So mm -hmm. obviously, whichever Batman movie was the darkest was probably the one I was going to gravitate towards the most. But it is, I think, it is like a really good movie. Absolutely. Um, aside from all that, but you know, <laughs> I really wanted to, to calculate, you know, his like helicopter umbrella. Mm -hmm. And so that took a lot of research. Cause I like had to learn about like helicopter, like physics yeah. and <laughs> something called actuator disc theory, which is all about like trying to like figure out like the airflow and the thrust and all that stuff. I if you treat imagine. the helicopter <laughs> blades as an infinitely small disc, mm -hmm. you can do all these different calculations and, and so I like went down a rabbit hole with that and took weeks and weeks studying up on that, writing out the math and making sure I had it right. Yeah. And then of course there's like stuff that I could explain. Um, 
that I didn't think to explain in my video, but I later explained when I went on action movie anatomy and did film physics on action movie anatomy mm. as a special segment on the show, which was like so awesome and exciting I'm for sure. me to do. Yeah. Because like you, you think about it, like I was just like a fan of like after buzz TV and that's what's so mind blowing about and, all this dude. <laughs> and, and like all of a sudden one day, like something that I created because I was yeah. inspired by Christian Ruvalcaba and Cody Hall, exactly. all of a sudden this thing that I created um because of those guys inspiration is now a special segment on like a popcorn talk yeah, show you're there <laughs> yeah and then like months later like i was a host on my own popcorn talk show i was yeah. just like shh. i felt like the luckiest guy in the world uh to be there but uh without going on another tangent um i so like what i was gonna say was there i brought up something that you don't need calculations for which was like hey um, there is no, like, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, like, like there's no rotor on like to stabilize the, mm. the helicopter. Oh, gotcha. I, yeah. So, um, so like the penguin would just be kind of spinning in circles and like probably <laughs> like accidentally, Danny DeVito flying pro forever. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably accidentally like decapitate himself because yeah. there is nothing to stabilize <laughs> his helicopter at all. That's why helicopters have that little vertical rotor, like on the tail. Um, yeah, on the back. Yeah, that much so, I like, do know. <laughs> it, it makes it so the helicopter doesn't like start doing this. Yeah, and like spinning in crazy circles. So that's something you can explain just by doing a little bit of research and not mm. have to do math. But then there's also like the heavy math portion yeah. of that. And I wanted to like put it in terms that people would understand. So like I found out the amount of power you would need to operate such a helicopter. Mm -hmm. And then I figured out how much power you need to operate a small lawnmower and found out the <laughs> equivalency. Turns out like the penguin would need three push lawnmowers to, to get love, that thing off the ground. <laughs> I love so that I that's the answer. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think he's got three lawnmower engines inside yeah, the, sadly the handle of his umbrella. <laughs> I don't think that's the case at all. So myth busted. There it but, is. Yeah. <laughs> laying down the facts about the exactly. Penguin's umbrella, yo. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of like my process. And then once I have that figured out, I do mm -hmm. all the math first. And then I figure out how to write a script around yeah. the math and how to explain the math. And that's, gotcha. and then at that point, it makes it easy, pretty easy to write a script unless you're doing a Christmas special, which takes a lot more creativity. Of course. Got to get the headaches. puns, got to get, you know, <laughs> all the Christmas vibes, you know? Oh, and it, then I used a puppet, the whole thing. I saw, <laughs> we're going to throw that in right here. Boom. <laughs> I love the puppet, man. Ralph, Ralph's a good puppet. Ralph the puppet. Um, yeah. Yo, man, moving on to your next, I mean, this is where, guys, Brandon has been laying down the education for real. Because this is talking <laughs> about stuff that's actually happening in our world currently. And especially during coronavirus, when I know absolutely nothing about what's happening, Brandon is a lifesaver here with his show, The <laughs> Periodic Table, where they actually break down these articles with a, a group of guests, man. Um, first of all, what a cool idea. I love the premise of the show. I love how fun and engaging you make it. Because, dude, I mean, I'm sure a lot of these guests aren't as well versed in science as you. And, and yet I still see how engaged everyone is and you're making the conversation fun and even just to watch it's fun. So what, what have you found doing this, the periodic table versus film physics that you've enjoyed in this venture? Well, I mean, first of all, thank you for like saying all the nice things about it. <laughs> of um, course, man. But, you know, it, it, it's a little different. Obviously, with film physics, I get to talk about movies and I get to do yeah. math, which I'm a total nerd. I love doing math. <laughs> I, I had so much fun doing all the diehard math and like figuring out like, mm -hmm. oh, look at the momentum versus the time <laughs> and all this stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, I really wanted to, you know, especially being over at Afterbus TV and the Popcorn Dot Network and hosting weekly shows where I was on a panel of people mm -hmm. and we would live stream. And I was fortunate enough to be like the lead host slash moderator on a lot of those shows. And I just loved doing it. I love, like, I love obviously being on a show and being able to talk and give my opinion about stuff, but there's something I'm about sure. being a moderator on a panel where there's like, cause like, I'm like a meticulous, like very like, obviously I like math. So like, I'm like one of those guys, wired like, in, bro. <laughs> I don't know which side of the brain it is, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm someone who like, is like very like calculated in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, being able to be like a lead host, it allowed me to, or a moderator, uh, it allowed me to like be like a different, like show a different side of myself on camera that Absolutely. I get to do in hosting in general, where like in my day to day life, I'm pretty like quiet, like 
mild mannered person, mm. um, uh, shy. I don't like talk, uh, really very much, <laughs> really, but That's, that surprises me, man. Yeah. But you know, <clears throat> being on camera, um, it just allows me to show a different side of myself that I don't get to show in like everyday mm. conversation and have like a different energy and like, show, like I said, show a different side of myself. Yeah. And, and so being a moderator on like a panel of people, there's like a certain structure that you have to follow. The show has to be done within a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you introduce the show, introduce yourself, introduce everybody correctly, give them all like the proper like credibility. So like, you know, like the people listening know like, Hey, why should I be listening to this person? You know? <laughs> yeah. So, and like, and like, okay, there's certain topics and you got to like steer the flow of the conversation and steer yeah. the ship and make sure that everyone gets a time to speak and like, you know, make sure that the conversation flows correctly and you mm. hit all of your topics. And by the time your time limit, like if it's supposed to be like a 45 minute show, plus or minus five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever yeah. that makes sure you end the show within that window of time. And it's a challenge, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a challenge I really enjoy and there's like a structure to it and there's a format to it. And I'm someone who like really appreciates that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I just have like a lot of fun doing that. And like, and I just, it makes you feel like important, like to be on a, yeah. like on camera, you know, it's yeah. just, oh, it's, did I get that? <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't know. I really, I really, really enjoy hosting and, um, you know, with the pandemic, obviously, like mm. I haven't been able to like do that as much. And so what so many people have been doing is just hosting their own content on their own YouTube channels yeah. and their own Twitch channels. And I'm like, all right, like I want to get in on this, you know, because this is something that I really enjoy doing. I really love mm. doing. Yeah, I see it as a second career. I want to to, to go forward with it and Absolutely. hope that it one day can become my primary it's career dream, in some dude. capacity. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I'm like, all right, like I'm going to do this thing. Um, everyone's doing stuff about movies. I want to do mine about science. I've always wanted to do a science show. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, well, like, how can I do this while following that same structure that I had over at AfterBuzz TV and the Popcorn yeah. Talk Network? And I was like, all right, science news. I could do a weekly show where I talk about the hottest science news stories of the week. It's perfect um, through, because I used to help Ben Bateman and Andrew Guy produce action movie anatomy. Mm -hmm. I would like write all the show notes up the day before and make sure that they had everything prepared. And like, they were the ones that really taught me how to produce a show. And then once I went into After Buzz, they also do a workshop on how to produce a show. Oh, wow. And nice. the workshop was really easy for me because I already knew it all. Skills, bro. Because Ben Bateman and Andrew Guy <laughs> yeah. knew all that stuff from working at After Buzz themselves. Yeah. And they had taught me ahead of time. So I was like, all right, like I know how to produce a show. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, like I've got this down pat. Like um, we could do top three science news stories of the week. We'll keep the show to 45 minutes because everyone's doing hour long, two hour stuff on a weekly, daily basis. Yeah. And it's like, you got to give someone like something that's like long enough, but like, Digestible. you don't, you don't, you don't want to keep them there all day. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm like, all right, I'll do I want to keep this to 45 minutes. Let's do three science news stories. Mm -hmm. One of them will still be a science news story, but it'll be more of like a special segment where there's like a specific reason why we're talking about it. And mm -hmm. it can be like, we're highlighting a, particular scientist that week that deserves some spotlight or wow this is like a really funny story like let's make it kind of quirky and fun um you know like one episode that i just did we I was gonna like say your most recent episode yeah, your last most story man my most recent episode there was a, a story about x-rays <laughs> flaring out of uranus yep <laughs> and i was like this is like really educational, but super silly. Yeah. And the article even like kind of makes a point to like phrase it in funny ways. Yeah. And I'm like, that's captivating. That'll make people laugh, but it'll make people pay attention. And I'm like, all right, I'll make this the special segment and I'll title it something like, what did you just say? Like, that'll be the title of the special <laughs> yeah. segment. And like, so I like to do stuff like that and then do a main story, which is the one that like I put on the thumbnail and in the title mm. and then have like a secondary story, which is sometimes more interesting than the first story I do. Mm. But I try to make the first story something that's going to like catch people's attention. Yeah. And so, um, so I do that, but all stories are equally important. They're the of course. In the world of best. science, man, it's, yeah. it's knowledge, dude. Knowledge is Exactly. Power. <laughs> They're the three best news stories of the week. So I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, the night before the show is when I, I, I'm like, you know, I want, sorry, I wanted to do a show 
mm. that I can easily produce on a weekly basis. Because gotcha. producing yeah. a show is very hard. Very. I cannot do film physics on a weekly basis. <laughs> it's too much time. I it's too much imagine, research. Man. I can't even just, imagine. It, I like I I got to be really really prepared for film physics, of course. Uh, especially when a lot of math is involved. Of course. But with something like this, I can produce this on a weekly basis. Where the night before the show, that's mm. when I research my news stories, so I make sure when we when we do the show the next day, I'm not missing anything. These are the three best news stories yeah. of the week because I got them as recently as I possibly could while also mm-hmm. still being prepared for the show. So I like, I find three, three science news stories that really, really catch my attention. And I feel like I've done a pretty good job of that because like after I've picked these stories and talked about them, I see much more, uh, popular publications and YouTubers also mm. talk about these same stories. I'm not saying they're copying me, but like, they're I'm saying, a, like, you know. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying that it's a good story. So they're yeah. also picking it up as yeah, well. So absolutely. I'm, I've become pretty confident in my ability to make sure I pick the best stories of the week. Um, and so I, I just, I pick the stories. Uh, I write out an, an outline and I ask different co two different co-hosts normally to be on the show with me every week. And, you know, it's just like my friends that are also in the space that are hosts, they're actors, they're writers, they're comedians, they're producers. Um, they're, you know, anyone that I think could be a good fit for the show. I, I just, I, you know, I try to ask everyone to come on and there's going to be more people in the future that haven't been on the show yet that I'm trying to get on. Mm -hmm. And so they, the idea is that nobody on the panel is an expert in what we're talking about. Normally, I'm the most qualified. Sometimes I have Mara Kanopic on the show and she supersedes me. She becomes the most qualified uh, (laughs) because she's very, very, very intelligent um, Mm. and is also super passionate about science and has uh, worked as like a nuclear like engineer um, for the Navy and all that stuff. Mm. So she really, really knows what she's talking about. But for the most part, the people that I have on the show, you know, are like people like in entertainment and like movies and comedy and stuff like that. Yeah. But I want those people on because they bring a different perspective. I, 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 I tell everybody, I'm like, hey, you're not expected to be an expert. All I ask is that you read the articles mm-hmm. and be ready to share your opinion. And if you yeah. want to say something funny, if you think you like have like a funny joke about what we're talking about, like, let it rip. Like, this is a fun show. We want like people to be engaged and enjoy themselves. But like I said, the idea is that nobody is an expert. We are, I call it one big virtual science classroom where we're all learning together. The host and the people watching are learning at the exact same time. Nobody is teaching another person something. We're just all collectively learning about these science news stories every week. And we kind of all leave the show a little bit smarter for it. And there's resources there. Uh, I always put the links in the description and all that stuff. There's resources there. If people want to learn more, they could click on the links and kind of like jump down those Mm. rabbit holes and and you know, it's it's really great. I I really, really love it. I've had people on the show who've done that themselves. We're like, wow. I send them a news story for the week. And all I ask is that they read it and be ready to share their opinions, but they'll see something. James Maple's really great at this. He'll like see something that he found super interesting mm-hmm. and he'll Google that separately and, and learn more begins. about it. And, yeah. and then comes onto this show and he's like, Oh, Brandon, like, yeah, we're talking about this, but I also found this that I want to share. And I'm like, mm. yes, this is like super exciting. Yeah, like man. this is exactly what I'm trying to do. So um, he's great. I've had many other people on the show do, do the exact same thing. Everyone that I've had on has been amazing. And you know, I'm hoping in the future to have, like I said, more people on in the space, but also mm-hmm. outside of the space. I yeah. really want to interview people who are actually scientists, who That's are sick. actually um, basically doing the job that I want right now. People who are very successful mm-hmm. science communicators and like host and like personalities in the world of science and entertainment and all that. I want to get them on my show. Yeah. And so I'm working towards that. Awesome. I've, I've got some friends of mine who... Uh, you know, like work in science and engineering who I think would be great to be on this show. I'm going to invite them on. And um, it's just every single week, taking it one week at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just, it's just really great. Um, It makes me feel really fulfilled to do that show every single week and uh, kind of like scratch that hosting itch that I have, right? It allows me to, to moderate a panel of people and do it talking about science, which is something that, super passionate about 
uh, really care about science communication. Uh, it's something that I want to do, something that I want to be a part of mm -hmm. and just like educating people in general and getting more and more people talking about science. And if I can do that through movies and film physics, that's yeah. great. If I can do that through hosting a science show every week where nobody knows what they're talking about, <laughs> or we're just like cracking jokes and having fun, but also sharing what we learned that day, yeah. then that's another great way to do it. So mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully, you know, I feel like uh, a lot of good has come out with it. It's exactly, Definitely, yeah. it's almost exactly the show that I envisioned when I thought about it. So it's yeah. really great that it yeah. didn't turn into something I didn't want it to be. It really, really is the show that I envisioned. Mm -hmm. I'm super happy with the product. I'm always just super critical with myself though. That's the one thing. Dude, it's I'm hard not someone to who's be. very hard on himself. It's hard I'm very hard on be. himself. You know, like I said, like hosting at after buzz TV, they were always so great because first and foremost, it was a hosting school. So they like teach you like what the right and wrong things are to do when you're hosting, when you're on camera, when you're serving different roles on a panel, like the proper way to like act and all that stuff. And so like I, it, it's, or like, like I've probably done in this interview a lot, say like, and um, and ah, and pause and do all these things you're not supposed to do in public speaking. Yeah. You know, I, I get really hard on myself when I make those kinds of mistakes. And so I'm always super critical of myself. I'm always trying to become a better host. For sure. And uh, so that's just like, that's like the one criticism I have every week is myself. I'm like, ah, mm. like I was rambling on too much about that topic. Like, you know, I, Cause like, this is one thing I do sometimes uh, when I host a show, sometimes I want the show, I want the show to be 45 minutes. Sometimes uh, we're done with the three topics in 35 minutes. Yeah. And it's okay to end the show at 35 minutes if you've <laughs> talked about everything mm -hmm. and you've talked about it thoroughly and everyone got to say what they wanted to say and the super and the show was fun and engaging and flowed really well. Yeah. It is perfectly okay. That show was meant to be 35 minutes. Yep. I have a bad habit of rambling <laughs> on trying to push it to at least 40. Yeah. I have a really bad habit of that. I'm like, the show's ending too soon. I, I need to stall. keep it going. Don't I've do that. I do not do that. <laughs> that is hosting 101. Do not do yeah. that. Yeah. Because that, that's when you start to, to, to just make things up as you go along. And things, exactly. things may, may fall apart. But I want to say this. Especially. Dude. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, especially no. when talking. Especially it. when talking about science and then you end up putting your foot <laughs> yeah. in your mouth and saying something that is completely factually wrong, which I'm pretty sure I've done before. <laughs> and it's okay, man. It's, and I then I try say, to backpedal. You know, I want to say this. Your quote unquote rambling is you, dude. I have such a oh. good time watching your show. And you always say that when you're done with a long <laughs> diatribe of science. I'm like, nah, Brandon. This is what we came to see, my friend. I bring Everyone attention it. to it. I'm like, ah, I don't know. Probably <laughs> shouldn't, but I do. You can't yeah. help it sometimes. I get you, man. I, get I appreciate you. that, though. Of course, dude. Of course. Um, I kind of want to jump into some straight movie talk because I, I, okay. I, I, I know I'm correct on with the first series we're going to talk about. So we'll start there. I know you're a huge Jurassic Park fan, man. Yes. I, I, I did my research. And also, I, I just <laughs> recently, within the past like two or three months, watched the original trilogy again. Um, obviously you love those films. And as a science guy, I kind of wonder, like, did that, did that kind of begin your science love, you know, in a way? Maybe to a certain degree, mm. uh, you know, every once in a while, I think to myself, you know, uh, you know, sometimes like me and Sabrina joke around, she'd be like, do you just want to like, forget everything and just move to Paris and like work at a coffee shop or a bookstore and just not exist. <laughs> you know, like at the end of the dark Knight rises where Batman just goes to Italy and Sitting disappears. His coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, like, like it's like, but sometimes my stupid, like my goofy self, I'll be like, you know, like maybe I should just like drop everything and go to school and become a paleontologist, you know, <laughs> yeah, like dude. just like dig up dinosaur bones. <laughs> I'm like, that's unreal. Like, shut up, Brandon. You're being stupid. Like, <laughs> it's not as it's not as fun as it's glamorized on Jurassic Park. Sure. Like, dinosaurs I'm don't sure. chase after you, Brandon. <laughs> um, but I know I I love those movies. I've loved them like as a kid. I remember driving down to Universal in Florida as a kid for vacation, and like we used to have like one of those SUVs that had like a DVD player in the back. Oh, I'd be watching Jurassic Park three. <laughs> Yeah. on our way to Universal to go on the Jurassic Park ride for the first time. So that was like like a fun little childhood mm -hmm. memory. Uh, love those movies. Uh, as I just mentioned, Jurassic Park 3 is the one that's... I was going to ask about that, yep. It's the most <laughs> critically panned of them all, I think. But I love it so much. 
Yeah. <laughs> I get super, it, dude. It's yeah. it's a super fun movie. I mean, it's flaws fun. and all, it's so fun. It's hilarious though. It's <laughs> it fun. truly it's is just, hilarious. It's like a it's like a quick 90 minutes. It's like an amusement yeah. park ride all on its own. It's just it's true. Sam Neill and friends running from dinosaurs <laughs> and then him as him as Alan Grant, like every five minutes just tossing a one liner out there. Yep. You can't forget about uh, like William great. H. Macy too. Being, yeah. <laughs> being a little dream in that movie. I love to see him. He's hilarious. In it it's as just well. like, go, like giving one liners going on like monologues. Like you're no better than the people who built this. Place. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or like, you know, like some boys are astronomers and some are astronauts. You know, it's like, I can't, I eat it up. I eat it up every time Sam Neill's on screen. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I love those movies so much. I would say though, my passion for science really didn't start the way it is now until mm. high school oh, when okay. I took physics for the first time. Wow. I always kind of struggled with science before that. Biology wasn't quite like my thing, like chemistry, mm. all that stuff wasn't my thing. You know, like basic sciences you learn in elementary school. I didn't quite 100% gravitate towards that, but I was always really good at math. Mm. So when I took physics, I was like, wait, like science with math in it? This is it, baby. Like, yeah, I'm like, keep talking, keep talking. I'm like, what do you mean I get to learn like the mysteries of the universe? Like why things Craziness. fall from the sky and yeah. like how solar systems work and all that. Like what, what do you mean? Like, mm. like why ships float? I can learn that? Like I'm Crazy. in. So yeah. that was it, that was it for me. Uh, that was when I really became like passionate about gotcha. science. And then through that was able to gain an appreciation later on for like biology and chemistry, which still mm. like aren't my fields of study, but like I respect the hell out of them. I'm and sure. there's like so much amazing science. Like chemistry is nuts. Insane. Chemistry is crazy. I don't understand any of it, but it is so crazy i mean even and, if you look at it, like the basic foundational level like what we learned in high school it's already <laughs> like you're telling me that these two yeah. molecules combine to make this <laughs> how is it <laughs> happening tell me yeah it, it's pretty like you watch like the martian the martian's a great oh, movie dude, for me love that movie love yeah it. it is so good because it's like it's funny and charming and witty and like really entertaining but there's yeah. like a lot of really cool science in it too yeah like Mark Watney's got to figure out how to make water on Mars. And he's like, well, I've got like, I forget exactly what he does. He's like, well, I've got hydrogen and oxygen and, and a fire, you know, <laughs> you know I can make water with that. Yep. Like what? How? Like it's Insane. crazy. How you... So like that stuff is like super, really fascinating. I don't understand how he did it. Still to this day, like I understand the basic idea mm -hmm. of like how he was able to like take hydrogen and water and like make it bond by like heating it up and all that stuff. But like, if you ask me to explain that any further, <laughs> nope, it's totally that just gone. goes whoop real quick, <laughs> <laughs> way over my head. But uh, you know, and and the same thing, like like when he like keeps himself warm by like putting like like uranium or whatever yeah. like in the cabin with him because yeah, it's decaying and yeah. radiating heat. I'm like, that's nuts. Like this guy danger danger and <laughs> i like don't know put, how it's working i hope he's if okay. you put macgyver on mars that's that's <laughs> matt damon in that movie uh, Good but call. yeah but no so that was like more so what inspired me okay. to have my love of science and also in high school in particular my love of engineering and aerospace i would watch a lot of documentaries mm. on like history channel and the science channel discovery channel about the apollo space program and, and everything involved in that is just so inspirational and mind blowing. And I was yeah, like, dude. this is what I want to do. Yeah. I want to put people in space. Yeah. And, uh, and like, I, I even still have a DVD copy that I bought off Amazon of this documentary series called moon machines, okay. which is all about the Apollo <laughs> space program, but from like mm. the perspective of the engineers and how they did oh, everything. Wow, that's neat. It's really fascinating. If you're ever uh -huh. like interested and like the problems they had to face and uh -huh. and how they solve them and like you know the making the rover on the moon and they didn't quite know what the surface of they didn't know what the surface of the moon was like until crazy. they landed they just hoped for the best <laughs> That's they're like so all right crazy man they're, <laughs> yeah they're like they're like we're pretty sure it's like a fine powder but we don't know how far the powder goes down is it a few inches or Are a we few gonna feet sink into the floor of this place yeah exactly <laughs> and so like the rover they designed like by the time Apollo 11 went up, even though the rover 
wasn't on yet. It was going to be on future mm. missions. They already kind of had the thing designed and they were like testing it. And like, they had to like come up with a wheel that could like grasp multitudes uh. of different surfaces. I think they even came up with like a spiral, like tunneling thing that could tunnel its way through the, wow. the, the, the powder, or like the, the dirt, if, uh. if they need be. And um, trying to figure out how they pack that on to like the I need, ship, dude. And, like, I need to see this. This sounds insane. <laughs> this sounds like yeah. a story I'd rather see. Honestly, it's crazy. No, no, it sounds crazy. Like the and and how like Orner von Braun originally wanted to like like you would see in an old science fiction movie. He wanted to have a big rocket take off from Earth, <laughs> land on the moon, mm -hmm. take off from the moon, and land back on Earth. And it just like wasn't feasible at all. And there was like another engineer at NASA. Um, I think I always forget his name recently. It's like John Hubel or something like that. Okay. He didn't come up with this theory, but like everyone knew about this theory, but he like reproposed it at the time. He was like, Hey guys, why don't we do this lunar rendezvous we'll thing? Give it a shot. Where, we'll give it a shot. Where we just like <laughs> have like a lander land on the moon and then an orbiter circling around the moon. And yeah. then the lander like launches back up, meets with the orbiter and, and then, then goes, goes back to earth. Yeah. And at first they were like, ah, like we don't want to do that. And then mm -hmm. once they realized the other ideas weren't going to work, they're like, let's go back. What were you talking about again? That's Lunar rendezvous. Might, uh, we should try okay, that one. I think we yeah. should try that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, like all that kind of stuff, which is like super fascinating. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I want to be one of those guys that just like makes this stuff happen. Yeah. Imagine being like an engineer. Like if you watch like Apollo 13, like being one of those guys on the ground that figures out how to keep those astronauts alive as they make mm. their way as they like slingshot around the moon and make their way back to earth. Yeah. Like that's crazy to me. So um, like, and just like space in general is super fascinating and scary and weird. And, never, and the never ending and, knowledge that we'll get from uh, yeah. future travels. I mean, come and on. The, it's constantly new stuff. Is, yeah, I mean, then, I'm sure, you know, man, it's, it's new stuff about is coming out all the time. And then like you think about physics is different up there because you're not like immediately affected by the earth's gravitational pull. There is no atmosphere when you're in space. Yeah. And so, you know, like obviously like, Earth's gravity will affect you when you're like orbit, like say mm -hmm. you're on the, on the International Space Station, you're technically in low Earth orbit, you know, like you're under the effect mm -hmm. of the Earth's gravity, you're falling towards Earth, but you're going so fast, you just keep missing it. So you just keep circling around it. Yeah. Um, and so like, and that's like the same thing with the moon, the moon is falling towards the Earth, but it's just it's going so fast, it keeps missing it and just <laughs> goes around it in a circle. It's unbelievably uh, fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it's like so. It's like everything's kind of affected by one another, but it's different. And so yeah. um, that's just all like fascinated me to no end. And yeah. that's what inspired me to become a mechanical engineer and work in aerospace. And it's it's yeah, it's just like it's something I'm really passionate about. Like mm -hmm. as far as like my actual engineering career is yeah. concerned. Um, I don't necessarily work a lot in space right now, but I have in the past, I've worked on some really cool projects of stuff that has gone into space. Oh, wow. And it, awesome. It's just some of the most like rewarding, fulfilling yeah, I'm uh, sure, things man. to work on. And it's just downright cool. Like uh, they like have like vacuum chambers um, <laughs> and that they use to simulate the vacuum of space when you make oh. something that has to go into space. Wow. You got to make sure it's going to survive the the weather conditions, yeah. quote unquote, weather conditions of space, <laughs> right? So you got to put it in a vacuum to make sure it can survive a vacuum. And then you pump that vacuum with like liquid nitrogen to make sure it can survive the vast temperature changes of whether or not this thing is in direct sunlight. It's either going to get so really, crazy. really hot or really, really freezing cold. And... And so you got to like account for like all that. And like, you got to account for like, is this thing going to survive radiation? If you're putting something in space, odds are it's going to have electronics. It's going to have like circuit boards and, and, and all that kind of like circuitry going on. And you got to make sure if there's a solar flare that it's not going to fry the chips on the circuit Oof. board, you got to put it in something that's going to protect it from those mm. harmful rays from the sun. And you got to like account for like all that stuff. It's like space is like so... It's such a dangerous place. Like when astro astronauts going out there is just like, you really put your life on the line. Like, oh yeah, to no end. You really got to be like really passionate about wanting to go to outer space because <laughs> yeah. it is so unforgiving. Even I've watched documentaries about like 
International Space Station and how, and this is like, I think kind of like happened in the movie Gravity a little bit. Like that's kind of what, what made everything go off in that movie with Sandra Bullock. Yeah. And it's like, you know, there is so much space debris orbiting around the earth. You think about like every time we launch a rocket, there's like a bunch of spare parts just True. kind of get like lost in yeah. earth orbit and just, just garbage circ orbiting I've around the earth. I never thought about that. What the heck? Yeah. yeah. There is just a ridiculous amount of debris orbiting oh. around earth at all times. And, and you like literally uh nasa keeps track of all of it as much as it can Whoa. it has a log of where all this debris is in outer space uh -huh. to make sure that when you launch something new into space uh -huh. you don't accidentally yeah. hit some debris yeah and it, it's wild and there's always a risk because if something is like below like a certain like size like smaller than a baseball or something like that nasa can't pick it up on their sensors Oof. So there's always that risk if there's like something flying around at these crazy speeds. Enough. Yeah, exactly. Smaller than a baseball. And it would just, it will only just poke a hole in your It'll spaceship. Rip, It'll right obliterate yeah. it. And they've done tests here on Earth. And this is like one hell of a tangent I'm on. But I love it's just it, crazy. This kind of talk is amazing for the show. <laughs> it, Keep it going. It, it's just crazy because like they've done tests on Earth where they've taken really small objects and just shot them at stuff at like ridiculous what? speeds that uh -huh. you would see in outer space from something being in orbit. Uh -huh. And it is like, like setting off a bunch of TNT. It just like blows it up. And it's just like crazy. So that is like another thing you think about like up there in space. So like when you're on the International Space Station, it's like you always got to be like on, on edge. On your toes, almost. man. Looking out those be windows. What's going on? <laughs> if you're doing a spacewalk, man, be on your toes. You never know. <sighs> and I think they've had some close calls in the past, if I'm not mistaken. That but is so scary. Thankfully, thankfully nothing to the... Um, nothing gravity level. <laughs> yeah, nothing gravity level like Alfonso Cuaron, you know. There's some scientific inaccuracies in that movie I'm, that hopefully I'm so certain. Yeah, it has we'll, to we'll be. Put, <laughs> hopefully we'll put your mind at ease. If you ever think about going in space, I encourage you, if you have the opportunity to go to the International Space Station, obviously do it. <laughs> I would in a heartbeat. Would I go to Mars? I don't think so. That's too much of no. uh, that sounds like a one way trip to me. Uh, and <laughs> oh, I would no. like to come back. I like uh, Earth too much. It's nice here. Uh, but I think I'd go to the moon. I think that's as far as I would go. Okay. That's, I would feel safe and I'd be able to come back. You could see Earth. You could feel, you know, feels like home almost. Just yeah, and Earth and the Moon away. are close enough where, yeah. like, you can, like, actually communicate to people on Earth. Oh, in, like, okay, a yeah. I think it's only, like, a three-second delay in, like, radio oh, or wow. whatever. Where, like, if you go to Mars, like, Mars is so far away from Earth. Mm -hmm. It takes light 14 minutes, like, at, at, like to travel there. And it kind of depends because, obviously, like... Um, you know, sometimes we're like a little closer to Mars. Sometimes we're a little further mm. away. Yes. But I think like on like average, like when we do send like rovers and stuff to Mars, it's at that distance where light takes 14 minutes to travel. Shoof. And so that's the same for if you send a radio signal. Mm. If I like send a message to Mars saying like, oh, hey, Mikey, like, what's up? How's uh, <laughs> how's the red planet going? You doing OK? You wouldn't get that transmission for 14 minutes. And then I got to wait another 14 minutes for you to send something back and to I me. I hit you back with the Brandon. I'm dying. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too late. You're already gone. God. It's been 28 minutes. <laughs> oh, I don't want that. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No Mars. But hopefully we'll no see Mars. Brandon on the moon one day. Maybe the moon. I, I feel like I can do the moon. I can still see. I can still see my house from there. <laughs> yeah. So like, all right. The place isn't on fire. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope I hope that comes to fruition, man. This kind of talk fascinates me to know because like i said i'm not well versed mm -hmm. in this so what you're every time you're spitting these facts at me hey my mind is getting exponentially more blown in every second you, that goes on you got me talking about stuff that i forgot that i knew <laughs> until, <laughs> until you brought it, it up and then i'm like i forgot i knew all this stuff i gotta Dude, share it yeah your passion shines through and that's what <laughs> i love about having people on this show and that's what i love about you man mm -hmm. and talking about science it shows and i think the next subject if i'm correct may do the same. It's not science related, but it is a film series. Halloween. Oh. How big of a fan of you are Halloween, my friend? I'm I'm a, I'm a pretty good Halloween fan, I will I say. Um I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to start watching horror movies. Mm. And I you know, obviously like, I got brought that up to my parents like, "Oh, I want to watch horror movies." And I remember my dad and my stepmom were like, "Okay, like how about you know, we'll sit down one day and we'll watch some together and you know, it's like you know, obviously, How like cute. if you get if you get too scared, like we can turn it off. You yeah, know? yeah. So it's like, uh, it's not like 
don't get me wrong. Like I've had my fair share of like sneaking horror movies on TV when nobody's around. Of course. But, you know, this was like a fun thing for like to get together as a family and kind of do it in like a safe environment in the yeah. middle of the day. So there's plenty of time to get over it before you go to sleep and potentially <laughs> yep. have nightmares. Yep. But I was old enough. And so we watched The Shining, uh, which I'm a huge, huge Shining fan, huge Dr. Movie. Sleep fan. Yeah, it say it, Brandon. Um, Dr. Sleep rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, for those who know, I've stayed multiple times, uh, most recently with Sabrina at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, Whew. which inspired Stephen King to write The Shining. Yep, so indeed. big Shining fan as well. But Halloween uh, was the other movie that we watched. Mm-hmm. And um, I love all of those movies, even the bad ones. Me too. Uh, I'm super nostalgic for like, I remember just like as a kid, like coming home from school in the fall and like the leaves are on the ground and the weather is like just right and turning on the TV and AMC is running a marathon of Halloween yeah, movies. man. I remember this you know? too. <laughs> yeah. Like they do that crap every year and I yeah. eat it up. I love it so much. And so like, that's how like I watched all of these movies, like, I, uh, you know, like uh, all the Friday the 13th and I ran Elm Street also, whenever they aired, I watched mm. it. And I, I had this one memory actually that I'm just like recalling now of uh, me and my mom actually were like downstairs watching Halloween 4, The mm. Return of Michael Myers, which yep. is like one of the best what? ones, by the way. <laughs> Say it, Brandon. <laughs> it is one a gem. Ones. It's a silly it one, is. but it's a gem. It, it's silly, but it's like, as far as the sequels go, like it has the most oh, yeah. potential. Oh yeah, for um, sure. It, yeah. Before we and, veer into cult territory, we're yeah. <laughs> way too crazy. <laughs> yeah, like um, and so I remember that my my brother was like apparently like watching it on the TV upstairs mm. at the same time as me and my mom were watching it downstairs. And you know, spoiler alert for a movie that came out a long, long time ago. It, there's a huge twist ending at the end of Halloween Four, where um, where uh, Jamie Lloyd um is now donning the the, so, it's the, the clown shot, the, dude. <laughs> the clown costume yep. that Michael Myers wore as a kid in the opening yep. of the first movie, and she like attacked her stepmom with like a pair of scissors, and it's like this huge twist and. Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis. Says, Dr. Like, no, Loomis no. scream. Yep. <laughs> it's so good. It's uh, like, I love Loomis so much. I'm so That's glad awesome. that he's in all of, I love Donald Pleasance. He's in all those yeah. bad movies and I love it so much. Yeah. Like, rest in peace to that dude. He was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so incredible. And, and so I remember like my brother like came downstairs. He's like, whoa, can you really believe that ending? That's crazy. <laughs> and like, we were just like all kind of like talking about it. And so it's, and it's, it's just, it's really, it's such like, I'm super nostalgic for those movies and um, they like, obviously like they just scream Halloween to me. Like they're titled Halloween yep, and like they're what I want to watch during the Halloween season amongst the other things. Cause I'm like a huge horror movie fan in general, Mm -hmm. but I really, really love those movies. Um, Something that I've loved doing in the last couple of years is just kind of like going down a deep rabbit hole of YouTube where finding YouTube videos of people, who talk about these movies in like hyper specific Dude, fashion. Hold on. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I am the same way because every time I like do even watch one of the movies, I always pull up like mass comparison videos. <laughs> oh my God. I have watched so many of those videos explaining the difference. Yep, between the I mask love it. I love in every it. single movie. And then sometimes in different scenes, there's different masks. Dude, HTO, man. They got masks galore in that film. There's a CGI, <laughs> CGI mask, mask in Halloween H2O. <laughs> so in, iconic. <laughs> in Halloween 4, I believe, there's a mask that I think has what, like pink hair for like yep, a split, for one or like scene a blonde in, like, hair. The school. Blonde yeah, hair. Blonde I think hair. it's like a pink, it might be like a pinkish mask with blonde hair. Yep. The scene where they're in the school, for whatever reason, <laughs> I don't remember, they didn't have the right mask on set that yeah. day. And so they had to go with a blonde haired, like Michael Myers <laughs> mask for one <laughs> shot. And it's so funny. You like you, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's so it. jarring. It's like what just happened, and then also just back to normal again. <laughs> yeah, and like the mask in those movies looks different than the mask in the first two movies. Yep. Uh, maybe because of like copyright issues, I think they like couldn't quite recreate. Dude, yeah, I've never this, understood uh, really like why why they keep changing them, dude, and like drastically the, too between mm-hmm. chronological like films that take place within the same little timelines of Halloween. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, like the the original mask was a uh, Star Trek Captain yep, Kirk, mask. like William Shatner <laughs> mask that they spray painted white. 
Yeah. And like cut the eyes out open a little bit more, I think. Yeah. And like, boom, that is the class. And that's the best the mask has ever looked. Oh, a hundred percent. And then 100%. literally the in Halloween two, it's the same mask. Um, but it looks different for a number like, of reasons. Like a little looser, I think, too, yeah, as well. It was, yeah. It looks a little different because it literally is the same mask from the first movie. It was mm. sitting under Deborah Hill's bed for yes. all those years <laughs> in between movies. And it yeah. just got kind of like old and crusty and looks mm-hmm. a little bit different. And then on top of that, it's a different uh, actor in the suit. The first movie has Nick Castle. Yep. I believe I could be wrong. I used to know all their names really well. I think it might be like Dick Warlock, I think, wears the suit. In the second he's in one movie, of them for sure, in one and of the he, earlier sequels, and, and and he's just he's like someone like a little bit of like a, of a wider face, yeah. And so the mask looks a little wider; it looks different, yeah. But it's the same mask, yeah. Um, and so like oh, I've watched all those videos, dude. I've watched, <laughs> I feel you, man. I've watched, vi- I've watched <laughs> Halloween videos talking about one specific scene or one specific line of dialogue. Yeah, it's just fun. I don't know. Like I love the movies. And like when you're going about life and like you want to listen to like a podcast in the car, you can only go so long uh, watching stuff about like like movies, especially like when you're in the space. Oh, dude, I feel um, that so much. Like you, can yeah. only go, you can only go so far watching movie commentary when you're in the space and you now know all of the people. Yeah. It's like, all right, like, yeah, like Christian and Mark have great takes on movies, but like I've like spent enough time <laughs> with them. I don't need to also watch them yeah. on my phone while I'm at home. <laughs> yeah, So uh, I'm good. But so it's like, it's just kind of fun. Like, it's almost so ridiculous. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to watch this one guy who's really passionate about Halloween talking about yeah. something hyper So many specific. Halloween channels, dude, on YouTube. You guys take a deep you, dive, you'll find you could, them. <laughs> you could talk about Halloween for days, for days. And yeah. so like that, it's just fun. And then you learn these little facts and it's just, it's fun to kind of talk about it and, and to watch to watch other people talk about stuff they're really passionate about is just fun in general. Yeah, man. So, That's the yeah. joy. That's the joy. And dude, we got to have you back when we get closer to October. We're going to talk Halloween for sure. Ooh, we got Halloween it. Kills is still coming out this I year. I hope. No, I hope. I, dude. Oh, please. It looks pretty good. I I'm a fan. I'm a I'm a fan of 2018. I really am. Okay, like, Brandon. Yes, yeah. dude. Because I, <laughs> dude, I love that movie. The mm-hmm. 2018 Halloween. I I dare I say this is my hot take of this episode. My favorite Halloween film. Wow. I love that movie. I mean, dude. it's it's got to be. I mean, I, I do love like super nostalgic for like Halloween four, Halloween six, The Curse of Michael Myers, <laughs> crazy movie. I kind of dig it. Yeah, like you put Donald Pleasance as Doctor Loomis in anything, I'm on board. That's where he Paul goes Rudd. off the wall too. He's yeah, absolutely. And then off there's the, the producers cut. Have you ever like seen the yeah, producers dude. cut? It's- yeah crazy they like really went for it yep that, they that really went for it a lot of weird stuff. dark <laughs> very very dark it's horrifying yeah and then they're like we can't do this and then like <laughs> and then and like it was just yeah so um and so they you know where was i going i'm like thinking about like halloween dude like, just all so much halloween things. i love it halloween 2018 is what i was gonna talk about yeah uh, yeah really enjoyed it they got so much stuff right. It was so great to see yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis back again as Laurie Strode. And um, you really have, uh, I think, them capturing the like essence of Michael Myers. Agreed. And like, like, like the best has ever been since like the original movie. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They the mask looks as good as it's ever looked so since awesome. the original two movies. They yep. really did a great job of recreating it, but making it look all these years later. Yep. And um, they did have Nick Castle play Michael Myers for one scene. Yep, yeah. For one scene when he's like up in like the window. It's when they first and, see like, each other, I believe. Yeah. When 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 Laurie like shoots the mirror. Yep, and he just that's Nick mirror. Castle in the suit. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, for the most part of the movie, it was this actor um, James Shoot Courtney is in the the suit as yep. Michael Myers. And he does such a good job of He's scary, making you dude. believe it's the same character from the first movie and the brutality Absolutely. of the character and all that stuff. Um, it's so it's so it's so great. And I know there's like some Halloween fans who were disappointed in it. Yeah. Who were like purist and like literally like people <laughs> like and I like no disrespect. Like this is like your opinion. It's your opinion. Course, I like yeah. I totally appreciate it. But some people be like, oh well, the lighting was too warm. It should have been cooler come lighting on, because it on. creates a different kind of atmosphere. And it's like, hey, like I totally respect that opinion. I get it. You are a Halloween purist. Mm-hmm. Um and like but you know like like they got most things right that for enough yeah. I could really really enjoy the movie. 
And then I just kind of wanted to go off on another tangent, like thinking about people who have been in this suit. There's like uh, literally a scene in the original Halloween. It's actually Deborah Hill in the suit, like when like Michael Myers is what? standing off even, in the distance. I don't even know that. What? Yeah, it's actually Deborah Hill in the suit in one scene. Like in one of the like, scenes, like one of like the bush watching kind of scenes. Yeah, yeah, where he's like across the street, where like I think like Tommy Doyle like looks out the window or mm. something and like sees him, and he's like across the street. Oh, like that's goodness. Deborah Hill in the costume and that's crazy. Um, yeah and like that's her hand in the beginning where you have like the the point of view yeah, shot the first the, person the sister yeah okay now yeah. i remember that, that's that her thing. hand as yeah. like michael myers's hand uh stuff oh. like that like watch like this is all stuff you learn watching these videos guys <laughs> you gotta go check them out <laughs> <laughs> a lot halloween of fun so it's a lot of fun yeah halloween so yeah we're definitely gonna have some more halloween talk in the future man but hey mm -hmm. as we close out this episode i gotta ask you this friend of the show sabrina you and her are very close and you have spent the last year being, you know, pretty much only seeing her, correct? Essentially. <laughs> uh, for the most part. I mean, I was uh, beginning of quarantine, still living with uh, Alex Marzonia and Rachel Silvestrini. Mm. Mm. Uh, but, you know, since then, um, not so much. <laughs> yeah. So other than I do, I do go to work now. Mm. Uh, I've been going to work for a few months now. Uh, so try to be as safe as possible there. So I just see For my sure. coworkers mm -hmm. uh, and I still wear masks and socially distance. Good, Brandon. <laughs> Constantly <laughs> hand sanitizing. You Always on My hands deck, are so man. dry. My hands are so <laughs> Same. Dry. <laughs> but um, I wanted to ask, dude, through spending this past year with Sabrina, what is the biggest thing that you've learned from her through this whole experience, man? Oh, wow. That's uh, that's a good question. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I would say... Um, you know, like she's taught me to learn so much more like about like myself mm. and understand myself as a person, you know, I've like, I've spent like a lot of time, like, like alone, like I lived on my own for a while. And like, like I said, when I was out on business travel or like first moved yeah. out to California, I didn't know anybody. I went to the movies alone, but a lot of times I had a lot of that caramel popcorn when AMC, mm. uh, brought that out for the first time <laughs> yeah that's good i love caramel popcorn sabrina Same gives me dude. a hard time she doesn't it. like it i think what? it's good come on caramel i think, I think great. it's too unhealthy i think that's the problem but i Fair. love it <laughs> Same. hey i you know what i think pretty sure i gained 10 pounds when i was eating that stuff every weekend <laughs> going to the movies by myself so she's right hey. but but no i think she, she's taught me to like just learn so much more like about like myself as as a person and really helped like inspire me to, to do all this stuff that I'm doing yeah. now in quarantine. It's like, you know, it's like in COVID and everything, it's, it's easy to get caught up in it and be super Completely. stressed out yeah, and feel like you're accomplishing nothing. Yep. But then like, I look at like, wow, like I wanted to release this film physics Christmas special for two years and I finally did it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do this uh, weekly periodic table show and I'm like finally doing it. And, you know, I'm like, um, learning like so much more like about the Schmodown and all this stuff. And so like, even though it's like easy to feel like I got so much stuff on my plate, when I look at my accomplishments, I'm like doing like, I'm still like moving in a positive forward direction yeah. with like my career and my ambitions. And like, I think like a lot of that is like, just like, thanks to like her, like, just like being super supportive and helping me like, like being able to deal with myself like a little yeah, bit dude. more and like understand like that. who I am as, 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 a, as a person and like what, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, and, and how to, I don't know, just kind of like how to, 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 to understand myself better so I can make like more positive changes in my life. Yeah. If that makes any sense. At oh, all. no, that absolutely made sense, man. That absolutely made sense. And that was a beautiful answer. And we appreciate <laughs> you sharing that with us, man. Hey, this has been such a phenomenal time, bro. The, I'm, this is no cap. One of my favorite episodes that oh, we've done thank this you. show. This was so much fun. Um, as we close out here, what are some of your uh, goals for this year, man? As we are reentering the world, um, as things are going to slowly start getting normal, what are your goals for maybe for the channel or just personally in your in your life, man? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I want to, as far as like, we'll start with my like my day job, my like primary career you know i just mm -hmm. want to like people are like, oh, sorry i'm a little, a little burpy right now um, <laughs> you're good <man. laughs> no, it's, like, it's just coming up i can't stop it um, <laughs> try to be try to be professional brandon here we go keep it um, in keep it in baby here we go but um yeah i uh 
I, you know, I want to just like, just keep learning and being the best engineer that I can be for sure. Um, and, 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 and really kind of like, uh, like, like have ownership of my work, like, and really like make something that I, um, am proud of. And I can say that I had a hand in doing that. And I've done that in the past. I worked on it like, uh, a couple summers ago, I worked on something really cool like that. And it was a lot of fun. I just want to keep doing more stuff like that. And really, uh, like I said, it's just like learning the most that I can about engineering and like work on fun projects that I re- really care about and work on stuff that I'm super passionate about. And then, you know, as far as like hosting and Schmodown and stuff, I really just want, I want to keep doing my periodic table show. I want to keep, um, you know, uh, like working on like film physics as much as I can and mm-hmm. keep, uh, and putting more content out, maybe some more short form content out there, like science related, keep working on that, keep honing my craft as, as a host, as a science communicator mm-hmm. and hopes that, the, in hopes that that leads to, to future opportunities, uh, like that are more, more serious, like yeah. actually being able to, to be a host or a personality or a science communicator, um, as far as, as far as something a little bit bigger than my YouTube channel. And I would love my YouTube channel to grow. I really want to hit a thousand subscribers. I think that would be like a really amazing benchmark to hit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's something that I really want uh, as well. Uh, if it doesn't quite happen, that's okay. Because I like to, I like to see my YouTube channel um, as like a virtual resume where I'm constantly sure. working on myself yeah. as, as a host. And like I said, as a science communicator, and just building a sense of community, like so thankful for like people like you who do watch the show and do enjoy it and do learn something new from it. You know, having the same like group of people kind of come back onto the show every week and like bring new people with them is really fulfilling, really rewarding for me to to kind of being like, wow, like people actually do care about this stuff, especially especially because, you know, I'm kind of like tapping into the Schmodown audience a bit, which is people who love movies. So mm. to convince some of those people like, Hey, like once a week for 45 minutes, like come talk <laughs> science with me and yeah. see how you like it. Yeah. Um, it's a little hard to do. So I sure. super appreciate the people who do come over, who do watch and do enjoy the content. It's really rewarding to, to make something that people like, even though I'm super critical of myself. <laughs> and if I think something is garbage, if other people like it, then I can live with that. Yeah, man. Of course. <laughs> so I just, I want to keep working towards all that and just honing my craft, um, building this community and, um, and, 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 and working on myself so that I could potentially have other opportunities in the future within the space and make a actual career out of this yeah. thing is the ultimate goal um, and just like keep doing Schmodown. Uh, sometimes it's hard. I'm pretty sure every single Schmodown competitor has threatened to quit at least five I'm times sure. uh, in the past. Because, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it is hard. You know, you pour your heart and soul into course, studying and yeah. you're always going to find someone who's better than you on any given day. And it's, it's, it's difficult. But yeah. I, you know, like, you know, Sabrina even really made me realize I just, I just love this, this show. I love this thing. I love this competition Mm -hmm. and I'm just not going to stop like as, as, as frustrating as it could be sometimes (laughs) when you get TKO'd by somebody or, Mm -hmm. um, character work ain't quite working out. It's just, I love these movies. I love, I have a lot of fun studying to be honest. And And now with the factions and everything, I've made friends with like certain people, certain rookies that I would have never even Mm -hmm. ever talked to probably before, unless they like came to the studio in person, but like people that live all over the country, like I'm like meeting new people that are really great and love the Schmodown just as much as I do. Um, And so it's, it's really great to like be inspired by those people as well. And uh, it's just, I, I, I just, yeah, I just love doing it. I love studying these movies. I love the, the, the math and science geek in me loves trying to find like the money ball, like approach, like mm. what ways can I like, like look at this analytically to <laughs> yeah. give myself a competitive edge. Mm. I love doing stuff like that too. So I get a huge, I get a lot of fun out of doing that sort of thing. And I have like found certain things that work for me and it's really cool when I try to like help other people in my faction. I'm like, hey, look at this cool thing I find out. You can study this instead of studying this Mm -hmm. and you can increase your chances of doing well by this certain amount and blah, blah, blah. Like I love falling falling down those little rabbit holes of 
of math geekiness. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I just, just keep doing that, doing my thing with that. And, and hopefully we get back to studio with some of this stuff soon. I would love yeah. to like do Schmodown out of studio. I would love to host shows out of a studio again. It's, it's not quite the same doing it from your living room. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. So I missed like that energy and that atmosphere and being around people who are like-minded and really like a whole group of people who are just like, they want the same thing. Like they want to be in the Schmodown or they want to be hosting shows or like, and everyone is just kind of lifting each other up. You know, that was one thing that was so great about after buzz. Everyone was just always like speaking positively and lifting each other up and like, and, and, and like, you know, like, and learning together about how to do our jobs better and how to, to do these shows better. And it was just, it's just such a positive experience to to be in a studio with all these people who love the same thing that you do. I'm sure. Um, virtually is still good, but not as good. So yeah. Hopefully we, we get we back can. to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we do what we can for the time being, but Hey man, this has mm -hmm. been such a blast. Thank you so much for coming on Brandon. I'm glad that we finally got the chance to do this. Um, as we close out here, what do you want to plug before we uh, sign off here? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for letting me ramble on your dude, show and so going on all fun, these dude. different tangents. I and I loved it. I like went down a few rabbit holes for sure, but <laughs> Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon Hanna 07. As we've talked about at length now, I do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Brandon Hanna, where I host the show, The Periodic Table on a weekly basis. We talk about the top science news stories of the week on a bi-monthly basis. I am trying to crank out some film physics videos, which is like short form content that we mentioned where mm -hmm. I break down the physics in a movie or the science in a movie. And, um, you know, trying to do some fun collaborations on that. Uh, so, you know, wait and see, hopefully all that pans out. I don't want to say too much and jinx it. For and, sure. <laughs> uh, I do like, uh, something we haven't talked about. I've, I try to do a monthly, uh, live stream yeah. with some friends of mine. I just call Brandon Hannah live and we talk about whatever's going on in movies and pop culture at the time. And it's just like a lot of fun. We've done like an hour and 15 minute episodes and and it's just it's really cool to like talk about movies and like that's kind of how i try to like get some people in be like oh hey you like movies right those like those shows have tend to For do sure. better live numbers because mm. it's about stuff that people in the community want to talk about but then mm. once i get them in there like some people then kind of like give periodic table a shot yeah. and it's great to see so um i do that show and uh i do have a patreon um, uh, actually, uh, Mikey actually just, uh, I saw you, uh, Absolutely, became a patron man. of mine. Yeah. So I really, uh, really appreciate that. I haven't been the best in the past at trying to keep <laughs> up with, uh, Patreon. It's very hard. It's a lot of work. It is yeah, a full-time job all on its own, I can't imagine. but, uh, I am working on, uh, restructuring a few things there, like making it fun, uh, exciting. I want to really build that sense of community. Like a lot of people do such a great job at, and so, um, working on doing uh, a monthly exclusive live stream from there and all kinds of fun stuff. So if you at the very least want to support what I'm doing, it does help out a lot. And um, the goal would be to, to use some of that money to like pay people who come on to the periodic table with me because oh, wow. um, they're all super talented hosts, super talented people, and they deserve to be paid for their time. And so oh, wow. every time somebody comes on and they're doing it for free, I really, really, really appreciate it yeah. um, from the bottom of my heart because, you know, you have people who come on and they put a lot of energy into it and they got to read these science articles and they're not necessarily <laughs> people who love science. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's like a goal of mine too. But in the meantime, I'm just super appreciative to have people on out of the kindness of their hearts. And thankfully, at least they claim to have fun on this show. I hope they're not lying. <laughs> it looks like not, everybody's having fun for sure. It, <laughs> I hope everybody's having fun. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I think that is all the stuff to plug in. Just check me out in the Schmodown if you're into that sort of thing. Awesome, man. Awesome. And uh, you can find me here, obviously, Michael Chu on YouTube, Michael Chu for real on Twitter, um, and Michael Chu on Letterboxd. Those are basically all I use. I use Instagram as well. Michael Chu underscore, don't really post there too much, but you may see my me on Twitter or Instagram posting new episodes, obviously. If you want to keep up with my takes, though for sure on Twitter. A um, couple cool stuff coming out in the next couple weeks. Uh, obviously more chew on this. I know I've been saying I've been going to do video essays and short form videos as well. It's going to happen. It just so much is going on right now. We're trying to get this show up and running completely. We just got back this past week. So bear with me guys. It's going to happen. And I appreciate everyone for sticking around. I appreciate all the new folks that have been coming in after these past episodes. 
dropping some positive feedback. It really means the world to guys like Brendan and I, when we just know that people are enjoying it. It's really awesome. It's really awesome. And uh, like I said, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been an awesome, awesome episode. And I really appreciate you being as kind as you were to, to work with my schedule and to get this done finally. And thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I really appreciate, appreciate you having me on. I, ho- I hope, uh, you had fun talking to me today. So I hope, much fun, man. I hope whoever's watching or listening, I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on and like <laughs> start a sentence and then go off on a tangent and then have to figure out where I was and then finish that sentence. Dude, you're good at that though. You always find your way back. You always <laughs> yeah. find your way back, bro. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, guys, that's about it. We'll see you back here next Sunday for another episode of Chew on This. Peace.